Good morning and welcome to the European uh, Championships in Canoe Marathon 2015. We are um, here in Bohinje in Slovenia, one of the be most beautiful places in, in uh, Europe, I think. It's me, Stefan Gustafsson, and my friend uh, Ivan Lawler, who will guide you through this event. And um, this is a beautiful morning, Ivan. It's fantastic, Stefan. We came down early this morning try and get prepared for this and the lake was mist covered that mist is starting to rise now so you can see the paddlers paddling around warming up below the mist the mist is just maybe 20 feet above their heads it's a phenomenal sight here mountains all around and yeah like you said probably the most beautiful lake in Europe yes uh, very much so and uh, soon we will have uh, live cameras also from from this misty morning and the first uh, category on the start line is uh, k1 women juniors uh, the start will be within uh, a couple of minutes three or four minutes or so uh, and it is an interesting um, start line uh, with some athletes that have participated also previously in the European Championships, but most of them are youngsters doing their first uh, international marathon this morning. I think the opportunity for the girls to come here and race, like you say, their first big international. Not all the girls will make the sprint teams for their national federations, and this is a fantastic way of getting the international experience at the beginning of your career. It's an opportunity not to be missed for these girls. There are a couple to watch out for that have competed before, like you said. Catherine Rask from Denmark is probably the highest qualified out here with a couple of fourth places to her name at the World Championships and also actually third in the K2 last year at the World Championships and uh, fourth at the European Championships. So she's probably on paper one to watch out for. But the beauty of the junior racing is it's open to anyone. Yes, exactly so. And Katrin Rask uh, from Denmark is um, uh, have done also K2 racing with uh, Line Langelund uh, previously, and they had a bronze medal uh, last year in Oklahoma. In that Denmark, that always has uh, very good female K2 paddlers. But on this start um, start line is also uh, two Hungarian girls, and Hungary has always very good uh, marathon paddlers. Uh, from the bottom to the top, they're one of the best teams around. Um, they have strength and depth based on a, just a massive number base, I think, in Hungary. It's almost a professional sport there, second only to football, I think, in popularity. And that just doesn't happen anywhere in the rest of Europe. So numbers alone give them an advantage. But the other nations always manage to compete and beat them on a regular basis. So everything to play for. Yes, and we will discuss that further on during this weekend. Uh, but now, within a couple of minutes, uh, there are th they are lining up there at the start pontoon. Um, we can hardly see them in the mist here, this uh, misty morning. Um, and we will try to follow them uh, up uh, through the course. And can you describe the course a little bit, Ivan? Um, the course is quite unusual in that uh, it's actually a clockwise course. Traditionally, all kayak racing happens anti-clockwise for, for whatever reason, maybe that is just tradition, but it's a clockwise course. They go straight up the length of the lake, um, probably for about 2,000 meters to the first turn. Then it's a triangular course back to the first portage, which, and that course will be repeated in this case um, five, five times. It's a five lap race. The lake is mirror flat and conditions could not be better for this. No, oh, absolutely. It's a f fantastic conditions for um, paddling this morning. Uh, even if the mist is uh, forming a lock over, over the lake now, uh, we expect some sunshine also later on. On the start line now, uh, with number one is uh, Hungary, uh, Peter, Peter Dominic, Do Dominica. Uh, that will absolutely be among the top. I, I, I expect that. And uh, on the f on in the middle there is Catherine Rask uh, with number 11 on her boat, and they are, are off. They are off, and then um, and it is uh, Hungary. It is Hungary, and then it is uh, and it is Denmark uh, that is um, in the top positions now. 
and yeah. Croatia second up from the bottom here latching onto the Hungarians wash but you can't get a better lane draw than that that Hungarian looks like she could pull away right yeah. from the start it is uh, Peter Dominica uh, the Hungarian Pe Peter Dominica that uh, has to lead and then um, on the far outer side is um, uh, Katrin Rask. Katrin Rask in her white uh, tra da Danish tracksuit is forming a group uh, on the far right hand side and while uh, Peter, D Peter Dominica is forming another group on the left hand side. Very interesting, two, two uh, quite large groups um, uh, heading for the first turn, 1750 meters fro from the starting pontoon. I'd say Catherine Rask has either got to be very confident to stay that far away from the Hungarian or just hasn't quite realised that this group on the left-hand side were moving slightly quicker when they passed us at least. They're moving out of sight now, but Catherine Rask, if she wants to get across to that Hungarian, I don't know, maybe I used to run on fear too much when I raced, but I'd want to be there by now. <laughs> Absolutely so, but uh, it seems like um, uh, Dominica, the Hungarian girl, is trying to do what uh, her um, uh, fellow uh, teammate uh, Renata Chai uh, used to do, uh, go from the start with very very high speed, take initiative and, and ju just pull hard. And it's still uh, Hungary, it's um, Dominica in, uh, in the lead. Uh, in her group, uh, followed by uh, five paddlers now, uh, when they approach uh, halfway through the, the first turning point. Oh, on screen there you've got the group headed by Catherine Rask. Nicely organized group. And uh, you can see how far apart they are. And it's so misty, so the cameras have some difficulties to really focus on, on the different groups. We'll try to comment. Uh, there we go. Now they've, they've zoomed in on uh, the lead group led by Dominica. And as before, it's Brigitte Bacic to her right. And to her right looks like the... Uh, could be a French girl. To her right, it's hard to tell. I think it's France, or, yes. Or Anna Correa, Portuguese. But it's interesting to see there, Stefan, you've got Wash hanging from the left. They just moved out one at a time. In the men's racing, you'd see a more organized group forming into a diamond. But we might have someone trying to go around. It's hard to tell distances. And in comes the second group. And actually, they came across at exactly the same time. They've met up just before the turn, a little bit of ensuing chaos as the girls reorganize themselves. And quite possibly Jules Haak from Germany coming off worst in that collision. And that's, that sort of collision is all part of the race. There's, there's no contact, no one wants contact, but you just have to move over for people who are coming in when you've got... Yeah, it's a lot of tactics uh, there, and uh, now it seems like it's uh, the two Hungarians, the two Hungarian girls in, in the lead, and on the right-hand side we have um, uh, Catherine Rask, and on the left uh, might be Germany. Um, Jule Hacke maybe from Ger Germany. Uh, who finished uh, eighth uh, last year in the Europeans? So, so she uh, have have some experience, and she is the girl on the far left side uh, doing her the race all, on her own. Um, but uh, now going into the group for, as from this well. distance and these camera angles, it's really hard to get a depth of of perception. Yes. But uh, usually, when you see people on the outside of a group like that, they're trying to catch up. They're trying to find some flat water hopefully move up a little bit and cut back into the group in a more advantageous position. And hopefully we will have the angle from uh, the camera out there at the turning point uh, quite soon. We have four cameras uh, covering the course, uh, one at the start and then one up at the, up, up at the turning point and uh, two others here at the portage. So it will be covered by four cameras and uh, and uh, we will try our best to identify and comment on that. Interesting, there's no Italian in this. Italian women are traditionally strong in the women's marathon. They had uh, 
I think the European champion at the last championships, yet no contestant here. There's a number of reasons why that's possible. There's also no British contestant here, and Great Britain always have a, a marathon team. Yeah, we really miss both Italy and Great Britain here in this race this morning. I could go into one, Stefan, about why the British people aren't here, but mm. maybe I'll save that for later. Work up a bit yeah. of anger first and then uh, yes. air my grievances <laughs> to, to the world. Who, who gave me a microphone to speak to the world? <laughs> they didn't think this through. Anyway, online now, we're, we're coming in and this is the first, um, Junior Women's C1. So I, I have to uh, confess that C1 and me, I haven't got a huge depth of knowledge in C1. I put it out there to my C1 friends at home and they are rating the French girl here. That's on the far side. She'll line up on the far side, Pauline Martin from France. But I'm basing that purely on information I've been given, not on any of my own knowledge. It's, it's interesting to see that these countries have brought women's C1 here. They've obviously got development programs with women's C1 coming into the Olympics in 2020 and they've seen the opportunity of getting some international experience and race experience for these girls. Yeah, it's actually the first time it is uh, see one women on the European Championships and uh, we are happy to see that it is, it is actually six boats now so it seems like the efforts done by the International Canoe Federation to develop C1 uh, for women is uh, paying off a bit. So it's the first race ever in the European Championships for women juniors in C1. And the difference between C1 and K1, for those of you that might have or not seen canoeing before, is that uh, the sea, sea boats, as you can see, they are standing on their knees uh, and uh, are paddling on one side of the boat. They have no rudder and uh, need to steer and control the boat entirely by the paddle. And Hungary is uh, traditionally a very, very strong uh, nation in uh, C1 paddling among men but, and it seems like it's the same among ladies, this very strong nation of Hungary. And I, I, I think we will see a lot of Hungarian um, medals coming through today. Uh, I, was, I was looking at medal tables and stuff last night, uh, Stefan, and the Hungarians are head and shoulders above everyone else. Yes, it's, they are. Uh, they're so far ahead. I mean, Renata Zay, I think, in the Europeans has won something like 12% of all the medals available in all classes. Oh, and amazing. It's just, <laughs> you think, okay, you can't really match that. I, I appreciate you viewers can't see this, but the mountain tops have now just come out through the sun and life just gets better and better for us here in commentary. It's so beautiful. And the mist is now disappearing slightly. So we will have wonderful conditions for racing here this evening, this morning. He says the C1s disappear into the mist. We haven't had any feedback from the cameras at the top turn yet, but the uh, K1s must be around that and should be headed back fairly shortly. Brian, do we have any any um, connection with the cameras at the turn? Uh, usually in marathon racing, paddlers would use the washes of the other boats. We'll explain that also in a minute for those who aren't used to the sport. <coughs> in the C1 there, looks like a bomb might have gone off and they've all spread around all over the lake. But uh, what you have to realise in C1 is that to steer those things and to stay upright in some cases, 
you're a lot better to have your own bit of water unaffected by other people's waves. And it is going to be early days for these women. They've only had C1 announced as an Olympic sport for a couple of years now. So everyone's in early days. Um, it's probably unfair to judge the race on its sort of marathon qualities. But just to see them here is a step in uh, a direction. Yes, it is. And the wash hanging in, in groups is um, uh, a prerequisite for uh, kayaking uh, to uh, have medals. But in C1 racing, it's a little bit different. It's uh, harder to stay on the wash and it's hard to steer and control the boats. And we hardly never see big groups in, in C1 racing. I think also there's a numbers issue there yeah. as well, Stefan. With there's just not the depth of field that they have in the kayaks. So you, you don't have the same number of athletes at the same level. Mm. And the, di the differences just show slightly more. Mm. It's quite technically complicated to pedal C C1, as you mentioned. The boats, uh, as you can see on this uh, uh, picture, is very, very narrow. It's hard to control them. But it is excellent conditions here today. and. Uh, Actually, it's quite beautiful to, to watch uh, C1 paddling. It's very physical and and uh, you can see all the movements of the athletes controlling, trying to control their boats. You can see some uh, interesting moves here. The Hungarians are going straight ahead to, to the turn while the others are struggling a little bit to, to keep a steady course. K1's have now gone round the second turn. They're headed back to turn three. And from turn three, it's just maybe uh, 300 metres to the first portage. So they're about maybe six minutes away from the first portage now. But uh, the first lap is no portage. Thanks for that, Stefan. I made that mistake yeah. myself when we set that, up. That'd be a schoolboy error <laughs> and my first time at Coventry. So no portage on the first lap. I knew that deep down. Stefan. Yeah. But we needed to have that discussion so the public could understand. That absolutely, was, uh, absolutely. So it's no uh, no portage at the first um, at the first lap. Uh, otherwise, uh, portage is, is uh, one of the characteristics of marathon. Uh, on each lap they do a portage where they uh, jump out their boats and run for uh, 100 meters or so and jump in and uh, take another lap. And uh, that is coming from uh, a tradition of marathon racing in Europe uh, where you had to jump out to run across locks and rapids uh, or whatever stakes could be in the, in the course. So. Uh, it became a tradition and to make this sport a little bit more easy to access and to watch and to experience um, the portage is, is now a um, a natural part of every marathon race r races even if the nature of the course doesn't require a portage which is uh, the portages are challenging they yeah, are and it's a natural break point in the race it's a tactical obviously feature of the race you have to get in and get out without incident really first first priority on a portage is always to make sure you're safe once you've established that you're safe you can maybe think about doing some damage to someone else not physical damage obviously but damage in their position in the race and yeah it's a time of, of being able to split a group and it's very it's very easy to uh, lose some ground in the portage but it's hard to gain yeah i mean the easiest thing ever is to you know have too much haste yeah end up in an accident yeah your boat in upside down is probably one of the classic ones yes at the other end but here come the, the girls now you can see them on screen a huge group which is oh, i love races like that i love it you got people jockeying for position out in front there looks like it could be Catherine. Catherine, yeah, it is. Ross, she's paddling really nicely, keeping the, you know, a good high pace there. Yeah. I'm surprised they've got a, a group of so many. It's uh, yeah, it's very unusual for 
uh, women races to stay in such a big group. Uh, this could be a very interesting first lap, and it's Catherine Rask that uh, has the pole position there, and it's the both Hungarian girls on her wash. And you will explain the wash hanging principle a little bit soon when they have done their this turn. Into the turn, then uh, Catherine Rask uh, in the lead. Uh, both Hungarians on the both sides, wash hanging uh, nicely. And uh, I think it's German, the German girl, uh, Hake, Jule Hake, uh, uh, the, sitting there on the, the diamond wash. And the second Dane as well. Uh, yeah. Van Iversen in yes. the green boat. But it's broken down to six, a little, little burst of speed coming into that turn. Six boats away, going around the turn, that could even break to five. In the white cap. On this side, she's struggling just to keep contact. Now, as the leader, you know you have you have decisions to make. You've made some small breaks. Do you take that on, and maintain those breaks, or do you have a little look round, reassess, and decide? You know what? You're safe enough with the whole group there anyway, and make your life just a little bit easier. These athletes, as much as well as being aware of those in front of them, they'll have a good idea of where the other athletes are behind them. They know what's happening. Catherine Rask has just settled in. Let the Hungarians do their share of the work. It was a little uh, break up uh, from from the big group now. So they are five or six, six in the top uh, in the top group, and that is um, in uh, in the lead. Uh, Catherine Rask and then the big Bullet Iversen. Uh, the second Danish paddler, uh, together with uh, Dominika Pete from Hungary, uh, Petra uh, Jeschenski also from Hungary, and um, uh, Anna Correa from Portugal. And I think also uh, Jule Hake is the, the German paddler. Yeah, Jule Hake German on the guy. far side, yeah. she's, she's easily identifiable yes. with her drink system on. Notice some of the paddlers have drink systems on, camelback style drink systems. Uh, the race isn't that long to be fair, I'm not sure as drinks are strictly necessary. They're only going to be out there for what, an hour and a half? Yeah. Um, taking a drink with you might be a little bit alarmist. But there's various methods of taking fluids on board. Obviously at the portages your team can give you a drink there. It could be in a disposable bag or the girls you can see out there have chosen to take a permanent Camelback with them. Hungarians now, another injection of pace. The racing pans out, actually, for those who aren't canoeing aficionados, the racing pans out very much the same way as the road racing and cycling. People will make a group, they'll test the group to see what qualities the other paddlers have. It's a learning experience. The whole race for every paddler is a learning experience. You want to assess what uh, strengths and weaknesses your opponents have in these early stages so that later on in the race, when it comes to crossing the finish line, you've got a good idea of who's capable of doing what. If you just do a time trial style race, you run the risk of burning out before the end. And if it's too slow, you don't learn enough about your opponents to make good judgments towards the stages.
And these girls are uh, doing uh, five laps, uh, which means 19 kilometers and uh, four portages. This first lap is no portage, so next time they appear here at the venue, they will do a portage. So as they disappear off to the top turn, I go and check. We'll hopefully get some camera action from that top turn at least later on today. There have been a few technical issues here this morning based on pretty much the remoteness of the venue. Um, hopefully we'll get the C1s and just see them in the distance headed back this way. It's quite strung out as you'd expect for that women's K1 race. Six constants in the front group it seems. Two from Hungary, Portugal, two from Denmark. German Hangi in there and the second group not too far behind as they go up towards the top turn for the second time. mist here at Lake Bohine is almost totally lifted now, there's just a few wispy bits left floating above the lake. It is just a fantastic venue. So for those that don't know the sport well, we'll have a little attempt at explaining what wash hanging is. Now wash hanging essentially is the same as slip streaming in a cycle race, you're trying to gain advantage from the other competitors around you. Now slipstreaming and cycling you're gaining advantage by getting out of the wind. In kayaking the speeds are much lower obviously than cycling so the wind doesn't become too much of a factor. Ah, it looks like that second camera's actually coming online now. Anyway, what is a factor in the kayaking is that as the kayak moves through the water you create a wave. Now that wave has an energy of its own. You've seen how surfers surf a wave into a beach if you can get your kayak on that wave, so the tail of your kayak is higher than the nose, you're essentially going downhill. So aim downhill and then you're on a wash. So lots of action again in the women's race, Hungarians 1 and 2, Catherine Rask in the rainbow boat just coming around close to the boy there, just squeezing out the German and front 3, 4, Denmark in green there just closing in on one of the best washes in the game to wash behind the leader and between the two either side. Going around the turns there, the turns here are a little bit sharp on a couple of the boys so it's not a smooth turn round, there is opportunity to disrupt the pattern of the group as you go around those turns and there finally we get an on screen of who's who, so we got in the lead, Hungary, hu Hungary can't see the, the start sheet now. So 63 from Hungary, Petra Jezinski, then 51, Dominika Pito, 52 is Croatia, who we've Br Bridget Bakik, and she was the one who started off second up in your picture, straight onto the Hungarian's wash. She's having a good day out there. 61. We are looking at Catherine Rask, 67, her Danish counterpart, Bullet Iverson, and 56 there, Julie Hark from Germany, 54 from Portugal, Anna Correa. And that's the, the meat of the front group there. Interestingly, Spain not really up there in these races. But it, it's a very big group. Uh, they are all within uh, 10 seconds, uh, all these paddlers. So, and uh, that's uh, 
when we watch uh, these uh, intermediate result lists uh, we can see from the timing that uh, the group are well together like in cross country skiing or bicycling or, or so they are seeking for positions in that big group all the time and try to master the tactics although that second group is maybe only 10 seconds behind and yes. to, to the uninitiated that looks like they're in touch no one chooses to be 10 seconds behind they're all they all want to be in the front group they all want to be in, con in contention for the comfortable positions in that front group the comfortable positions uh, let's talk about the c1s as they come around for their first turn so that looks like hungary from it's hard to see numbers I'm going to rely on my informant who told me that the French girl was good, so I'm going to make an assumption. Yes, it's uh, Hungary and France. So it looks like I've got some decent informants out there. Thanks Richard for that. Much appreciated. It is uh, uh, Giada Bragato from Hungary together with Pauline Martin from France. Both Hungary and France uh, it's good uh, traditions in C1 racing. And it's absolutely perfect uh, conditions for this kind of race today. Fantastic. The sun is coming now and it's crystal clear water, mirror flat just great you're just coming out of the turn there you got the second Hungarian Ms. Kolski at that stage when you're strung out like that you're not going to catch the leaders I don't think you've got that in mind and at some stage through the race when she gets a bit tired the fear of those behind her becomes huge, doesn't it, Stefan? We've all been yes, there. Yes, absolutely. You know, absolutely. You, you know there's nothing left, and behind you, you can almost hear the horns of the hunters coming. Yeah. <laughs> they are closing you down, and there's nothing you can do about it. So they've got that to look forward to. It's going to be a big day out for them. <laughs> yes. And that fear comes early on, when uh, if you are in the lead all by your own. Yeah. Uh, so the tactics to go from the start and be alone there in in the front we have seen that happen a lot of time also practiced ourselves sometimes and then the fear comes and you're watching your back all the time and try to go, just go for it i think the most amazing thing when you're in that position is how many discussions you have in your head stefan yes about well if i wait maybe i'll be okay and i'll be okay with them but i'm this far ahead and i've done that work I think I'm strong enough and you, you go through so many ups and downs in your head in those in those positions. Yes, and marathon is it's a lot of thinking, it's a lot of strategy and you need to know your strengths and try to use them the best the best you can. And I, I like to look at Stefan as all, all the physical attributes of sprint canoe but with your brain as the addition. Exactly, exactly. So you, you've got opportunity for those that aren't quite as physically gifted to get some fantastic results in this simply because they are thinking people mm. and I think that's the beauty of marathon as a whole which is why internationally it's the big marathon races the cellar race devises to Westminster race all those big name races that attract so many outsiders from the sport as well to come and have a go Exactly, and it's massive these races. And one of the first ones was Tour de Gudeno. Uh, already in the 70s, it gathered a couple of hundreds, or up to thousand uh, paddlers. Uh, so these races have been around for a long time. These classic marathon races, starting in one point and finishing in another. And now we, uh, the girls, have are approaching. Uh, their second uh, turn down here uh, they have about 700 meters or so to go until uh, the first portage it's looking a lot more settled isn't it yes they've settled down the second group's really fallen back now we're down to six athletes and i think the speed is quite high now it's hungry in the lead and they have increased the speed uh, quite dramatically to get rid of uh, some of uh, so some of the others to try to form a nice diamond 
the tactics uh, they are using there is uh, trying to go as fast as possible to to uh, be four if they are four they can form a diamond uh, that helps a lot you can form a diamond in six Stefan you, you there's still a place in the back yes. behind that leader and what's amazing is that they haven't done that yeah, they've, they've found out they look like geese flying south for the winter, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why they, Why does somebody not get in the back there? There's, there's a golden opportunity there for someone to to be on that V-wash, diamond wash, whatever you call it, and be operating at maybe 60% of the effort of the others. Mm. So although we said it was sprint racing with the brains added, we still need to add some more brain to this race. Yeah, yeah they are. They are unexperienced still. Uh, so the tactic is, is that uh, one is uh, the diamond is uh, f formed by one in the lead and uh, one paddler on each side uh, riding the wash and uh, the force uh, behind uh, the they, leading they might be girl. There. They might be there now. Yeah, no. We might have done now them a uh, horrible disservice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the speed is increasing now. It is uh, hungry. Uh, uh, that is increasing the speed through uh, the through the turn. Try to create a good position for herself into the po portage. It's just a hundred meters uh, to the portage now, and it is uh, Dominica Pete uh, that took the lead already from the yeah. start. That is uh, that is holding the initiative now uh, when they approach the portage. Already on that turn, the German took a bit of a beat in there. Julia Hart, she fell off the back. Hungarians are coming to the portage. Interestingly, you come into the portage, the way you come in, the left side of the portage is the most comfortable to get out on. The right side, you have to adjust your direction slightly, but then getting in at the other end, the right side has the advantage and the left side slight disadvantage. So it's not crucial where you come in. So probably more crucial is where your opponents come in relative to you. You've got to work out where everyone is. Disadvantage people if you can, but firstly, and foremost, you must be safe. And now it's full speed into the portage, and uh, Dominica really set up a high speed already in the turn and made a long, long effort into the portage, uh, quite a demanding one physically. Uh, she is going really tough now, and uh, her. It is the second Hungarian. It is. Uh, uh, Petra Jesenski, who also uh, wants uh, to hold the initiative, and uh, we'll see if they choose the same side of the ponton. Yes, the left-hand side, both of them. While the Danish girls, both of them, uh, were choosing uh, the right-hand side. Over the portage now. <coughs> it's quite interesting how chaotic it can be. The portage basics are fairly simple. You pull up to the landing stage, and you get out, then you pick your boat up. You saw Danish girl, second Danish girl with the green boat there. She dipped the front of her boat, got the front of her boat too low, nearly put it back in the water. And if you run off then, it's just trouble. And they are well together now, over the porches, running there with a little bit of different technique all of them we will come back to that later on and now into the boats again it's and the other danish girl yes. comfortably away first just by being tidier through the portage hungarians to be fair often chaotic at the yes portage. yes um, it's something that they don't maybe they don't practice at home but the german who came into that portage towards the back has come out of it very very well indeed well, what happened to the second Hungarian? This is uh, uh, only Dominica that is um, that it really is there. But now it's Denmark. It's Denmark. It's Katrin Rask and it's uh, Bolette Iversen that made a wonderful portage. So their uh, legs carried them really fast over the 100 meter run, and now they are heading for it to uh, maybe create a, a decisive gap. What do you think? She's certainly not waiting, is she? I mean, she has a decision no. to make when she gets in. You can wait for the group to reform or you can string them out. But she's strung them out. The second Hungarian's nowhere in sight at the moment. She's just... Uh, there. Yeah, it's just with the Portuguese, just off the back there. I mean, you'd have to call that a disastrous first attempt at a portage. I mean, they've got time. They've got time to close the mm. gaps. It's not the end of a race, but she's not paddling like she's intended to catch up either. There's no sense of emergency. 
looking at them from behind. She's actually moved away from the Portuguese girl. She's not riding on her wash. Something so happened in the porters to her. You'd say uh, job done for her, I think. Yeah. So Catherine Rask is really, yeah, she's at least intended to string them out up that first leg. She's going really tough now. She's trying to do a decisive effort. Catherine Rask, and uh, we know she's uh, fit for it. She had a medal uh, already last year in K2 in the World Championships in Oklahoma, a bronze medal there. And they had a fourth position in K1. And yeah. that was behind three girls who were last year juniors at the time. I mean, she's obviously young racing last year. Yeah, she was the first year junior last year and the best one of the first year juniors participating uh, last year in the World Championships in Oklahoma. Eight months ago, about that. I don't know about you, Stefan. I'm kind of hoping it regroups a little bit. Yes. The, the procession from here isn't the most interesting for the spectators, it, although it's very impressive from the athletes. It's... Uh, give us a little bit more entertainment if uh, those that second pair can catch up the two Danes. Second Dane Iverson, she'll know from domestic racing whether she can or can't catch up Catherine Rask. I suspect she can't on her own, so her only hope is to hope that uh, the Hungarian, when she comes through, she can pick up a ride with her and make it back to the front that way. An appropriate tactic would be for the Danes to to try to stay together and help each other a little bit uh, there. Always a fine line between friends and competitors, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is. But in this who, who early, knows what history those two girls have at home? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but in this early stage of the race, it would be uh, quite a good team tactic to, yeah. to do that. It would have been very yeah, brave of Catherine Rask to have a look behind after the portage, see it was only her teammate there, pick her up and go yeah. together. Yeah. If Catherine Rask is worried more about the Hungarians, maybe the extra 10, 15 metres on the Hungarian was, she valued that more highly. Or maybe she hasn't thought at all. There's always that option. Yeah. And she's just running like a yeah, yeah, chicken yeah, in yeah. the front there. Just using her strength and just going. Yeah. There are athletes like that. I mean, we, in the World Championships last year, you had uh, Balaz Havas yeah. in the men's K K1 under 23. And he went and he stayed ahead. Yeah, it was and amazing. It, it just yeah. went. <coughs> so there are athletes who are really comfortable with the time trial mentality. And there are athletes who are more comfortable with the group mentality. I know which side of the fence I always sat. Yeah, I know I cannot, my side of the fence as well. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot imagine a more terrifying, more scary place to be than in front of a race like this, this early, with no one with you. I just loved it. Being in front. Yes. We raced very differently, yeah. didn't we, Stefan? Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the beauty of this game. It, it there's, is. There's more than one way of winning these races. It is. And the conditions now is absolutely magnificent. It, and the, the mountains uh, surrounding this lake is fantastic it's uh, up to 2000 meters uh, high with the uh, peaks uh, also above that it's a great skiing area in the winter and now at summertime summertime it's really just nature and crystal clear water and just the eden of of europe here in bohemia and slovenia it's wonderful to be here and according to local legend there's some sort of gold monster up in those mountains also, Stefan. Okay. Not a lot of people know that, but I've been doing my homework with the uh, Bohemian Tourist Board magazine. The other really interesting fact, which confused me a little, <laughs> and maybe got lost in translation from Slovene to English, is that there's the exact amount of water <laughs> in this lake that can fill one bucket, provided that bucket is the right size. <laughs> and <laughs> Uh, I'm assuming there was something lost in translation there because <laughs> that doesn't seem too incredible to me. But it's logic. But it is logic. <laughs> you can't argue with logic.
So this Lake Bohin is actually the biggest lake in Slovenia, I'm told. Second biggest being just down the road in uh, Bled, which is more famous for its rowing regattas. But we'll make a promise to you here and now that that will be the only reference to rowing you'll hear from these commentators. <laughs> there will be no during this commentary. It's wonderful to be able to have this kind of uh, big um, international event in such uh, places as this. It's so tranquil and this uh, sport and this event is very suitable for this kind of surroundings. So we are really happy to be here. Does it make you want to get back out in a boat though, Stefan? Absolutely, absolutely. You're just saying that? Or? Yeah. Okay, K1's back in shot now. So, as we expected, Iverson has fallen back to the two behind her. She's the first of the Hungarians. Dominica Petto. And... the Slovenian. Or Croatian, is that? 56. Uh, we got it's uh, a German, Germany, uh, Jule Hake, and it is uh, and Iverson, and uh, it is uh, Hungary. Yeah, the German and the Hungarian there letting Iverson lead. They know she's the second Dane. They know she's not going to be catching up the first Dane, otherwise she wouldn't be called the second one. So they really need to be taking on the work there, if they've got any intention of catching up. But to me, it looks like... Uh, Catherine Rask is ahead and intended to stay ahead. She has uh, 10 seconds now, as you can see uh, from uh, from the screen. Nine seconds, actually. So she's really going forward now, Catherine Rask from Denmark. Yeah. Quite early stage of the race. She has, she has still three full laps to go and a short lap uh, for the in sprint. So this would be very interesting to see if she has the strength enough to to uh, make it on her own. It's 15 seconds there, 15 back to the third group as well. In, in your head, if you're the Hungarian and you've got intentions of winning, you have to measure that gap very carefully. You have to decide at some stage, it's either too big for you to even attempt to close, or you rest up enough, see when you think you can do it, and, and make the effort. That's a medal for a win at least, just paddling away from you right there, isn't it? It looks like the gap is increasing yeah. slightly. Hungarian is leading that second group at least now, but not with any intent. So, right from the start there, when we said Catherine Ross looked a bit confident, if she wasn't coming over to the Hungarian, maybe she had good reason to be confident. She's definitely the athlete with form in the past, and that gap is not getting any smaller. But these girls, these youngsters in the junior category, they don't know each other so well. Uh, for the seniors, they have met in many, many races over the years. They know their strengths and the weaknesses w within the groups. Uh, but these uh, these girls are newcomers into the sport and doesn't know the strengths of their fellow competitors. Uh, so it's uh, quite uh, unpredictable. That's a very good point, Stefan. I mean, when when we all used to race together, and when the seniors raced together, we raced hundreds of times. I mean, how scared would you have been if I'd got a 15-second lead? Yeah. You knew exactly what I was doing. Exactly. I was coming back. Yes, exactly. But then, on the flip side of that, if you had a 15-second lead on me, I I'd know that gap needed closing. So uh, these these girls have different problems to the ones we faced and they have to make decisions based on what they're seeing rather than what they know. And how they feel. They also, I think they are going as hard as they can can uh, for most part of, part of the race actually. Not so experienced in these long distances. Uh, so they are trying to use their, their strength <coughs> the best way they can, of course. And now C1 in uh, 
into their first portage. The very first portage for C1 women in the European Championships ever. And it is Hungary. Giada Bragato, who is in the lead. And Pauline Martin from France, just uh, 40 meters behind. That's the sort of gap with a decent portage you could probably halve or maybe even yeah. catch the whole lot. Yeah. I, mean, if, I think if this Hungarian girl is the girl I was watching yesterday, she's she's got a bad knee. Okay. She wasn't walking well, so okay. a chance of her running well. That's if it is the same girl. I, I'm pretty confident it is. So she, yeah, she was strapped up yesterday just to walk around the, the site here. Then she need this gap. Yeah, probably. And, and if uh, if it comes to the last portage with only a thousand meters to go, that a could very be good uh, C1 difficult. technique. She's using uh, the full strength of her body. She's using his uh, front, l her front leg, and the hips uh, pretty well. Yeah, you were right. Yeah. We'll see how the, this so tur turns out now. Yeah, if, if if that knee is as painful as it looked when she was walking around yesterday, she's doing a good job of running. French girl quite slow to get out of her boat. They do have one less worry than the kayak paddlers. They don't have a rudder to knock off on no. the portage. That simplifies life a little bit. But they pay a high price for that and to kneel up for the rest of the race. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, running fairly well through the portage there. And getting back into a boat. Nice, nice and easy. Settled in. Very cautious, very safe. And away nicely. No problem there. I imagine that'd be quite a relief to her. Yeah. Knowing that you know, the French girl's closed her down yes. quite a bit, but she hasn't overtaken. She certainly hasn't run away from her. You can see the difference of the technique as well. It's Actually, that gap's pretty much the same, isn't it? Same as when they Yeah, arrived. but uh, the Hungarian girl use, uses her legs and the hips um, a lot more. Yeah, kayaking and canoe technique, the, the fundamentals are the same. It's getting your weight onto that paddle, using your body rather than your arm to pull the, yes. the blade through the water. And here we can clearly see, see how she steered the boat as well. In the far end of the of each, uh, what to say, each each, uh, each stroke, stroke, uh, she's uh, twisting the pedal outwards a bit to keep the boat on the right course. Although I've seen this for hundreds of years now, Stefan, it still amazes me that you can yes. go right, round a right-hand turn when you're paddling on the yes, right-hand side. Yes, yes, exactly. The simple things amaze me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it <laughs> but is it's amazing. Fascinating. Yeah, it is. It is. So that gap looks good to stay, doesn't it, also for the race. Yeah. It, it's no surprise that the, the women's C1 has ended up as a procession, but you know, they, there's two athletes there who look like they're very competent, very skilled at a sport that is very hard to master. And it's a big effort uh, done by the International Canoe Federation to promote uh, sea, uh, sea paddling for women. It's a program, a development program, uh, where uh, mostly Hungarian coaches are helping, uh, helping out for different nations across the, the globe to uh, uh, gain some uh, <coughs> numbers in s uh, female sea, sea paddling. It's an Olympic uh, sport now, uh, the sprint uh, sea one women. women. No, I'm not a member of the ICF, Stefan, so me uh, you no limits on what I could say, but uh, <laughs> it's yeah. interesting. There's arguments both ways on the women's C1 and, and on social media. There have been a lot of heavyweight discussions. It has been a big, yeah, it has been a big debate on it, but uh, uh, gender equality is uh, r very important for all, all sports, of course. Uh, why um, uh, this is positive for that perspective. So here we come, the second portage for the junior women. 
and now the junior women has overtaken or overtaking the, the C1 women um, which is to be expected of course uh, K1 is much faster than uh, C1 and it is uh, it is uh, Katrin Rask Katrin Rask Denmark who is in the lead and it seems like she has uh, increased the gap slightly not very much but no no absolutely absolutely Catherine Rask uh, got some uh, new drinks there from her support crew. Running right to the end of the portage ramp there, which is a classic thing to do. It's the quickest way of getting in, getting out. And it's 19 seconds now. It was 10 seconds up there, so she has increased the gap uh, a little bit, which was expected. The second group are a little bit spread out there. It seems like the Hungarian then uh, uh, did a good portage this one as before. But then you see them put their boats in with some schoolboy errors there. The back end of the boat must go in first. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a basic of portaging. Front end comes out first, back end goes in first, you know? And to put the front in while you've still got the back out, you're asking for trouble. The rudders are fragile. They're the only bit of the boat that's gonna break really. Yeah, that's, that's stuff that should be taught by coaches very early on in this sport. Hungarian trying to make a break from the other two almost there. She's at least set off with some intent. Doesn't work for her entirely. German girl, again portage well, has come out yes. with her. And it seems like they created a break there from uh, and left uh, Iversen uh, behind. And she's uh, going fast now, Dominika Peter maybe trying to close the gap uh, and realize that uh, they have lost some ground. And Iverson, to be fair, looked the weaker of those three paddlers yes. on the water. So she's going to be hard pushed to catch that gap. At the moment, it's one leader, two in the second group, and one fourth place person who is uh, going to start to feel some pain in the very near future, I suspect. Yeah, speaking of pain, uh, this is uh, really, really challenging uh, now for, for him after the portage. Uh, the portage in increased the pulse uh, a lot. They are going on, on their ma maximum pulse now, uh, prob probably. And uh, the speed into the portage used to be high and uh, now the speed out from the portage is high uh, just because um, <coughs> uh, the group has split. They are really trying there, the two, the Hungarian and the German girl, uh, to leave Iversen behind. And she's struggling now, going at the full strength of her bo body, trying to close that gap. It's such a hard decision to make, isn't it? The gap's so small that you think if you go as hard as you can for a short while, you can close it. But if you go as hard as you can for a short while and the gap doesn't close, then you've spent an awful lot of energy and gain nothing yes and the cost of that is huge the, the rate at which you fall back after having spent yeah. that much energy is just accelerated massively yeah she's she's not loving life right now Iverson is not loving this race no. it's, it's even worse in that position to be fair I mean she's what she can see the three medals in front of her now yes and she's struggling now and probably her body is full of lactose uh, lactose acid and, yep. uh, and uh, she's struggling to to get rid of that. At the same time, she can't uh, she can't uh, decrease the speed. So it's really really demanding for her now. She's got a little bit of a buffer behind her. Yeah, perhaps she could ease up a little bit and then re regroup and start again. But if she makes that decision, really, she's given up hope on, yep. on the top three. That that would be a decision to make if you're desperate to cling on to your fourth place. If fourth place matters to you. 
And of course, what place matters to you depends on your expectations coming in. There's someone in that race who is overjoyed to be coming ninth at the moment, maybe. Yeah. And that's better than they expected. But yeah, if, of course. If you started out with a medal in mind and now you're in fourth place on your own, it looks a bit gloomy. And expectations used to increase or decrease uh, across the course as well, depending yeah. on how, how how well it goes. Yeah. Interesting that you saw a shot of the Hungarian in second place having a look behind her. Now, why why would you do that? That's that tells you straight away she's not looking at catching first place anymore. No. She's looking at holding on to her medal. Mm. So to me, this race is done, done and dusted. Uh, Catherine Rask has 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 got this in the bag really. But it's still two two uh, full laps to go and a short short lap, so they are a little bit more than halfway through the race. Beautiful shot there, the lazy paddling style of that front C1 paddler. Just because it looks lazy doesn't mean she's not trying. No, it's just it's, relaxed. It's, uh, she knows she's got the beating of the other girls in the race. I think that portage would have given a lot yeah. of confidence. This view and, uh, is uh, great. It shows the beauty of this lake and the mountains are around. And in the boats there is the judges, the course judges. Pauline Martin going round. She's not losing any ground, really. No. She, she's there or thereabouts still. We often see this in in, in uh, sea races. They they s stay on the positions, uh, not losing ground, not not uh, gaining, and then suddenly uh, it shifts. It's a big difference uh, to uh, kayak racing. Yeah, maybe, maybe if someone from C1 Paddling World could it tell us why they do that. In a kayak, you would either close that gap yes, or fall back. Yeah. You don't stay the same. If you can stay the same, you would mm. catch up, wouldn't you? I mean, you'd put in the extra effort, close the gap, and have the comfort of a, a wash to ride on. We have seen that a lot, uh, all in the men, men's race. Yeah. And last year in Oklahoma, it shifted a lot, uh, but they, they were never in, in a big group. See the scenery in the background there, forests. I think forest cover uh, half the uh, land area of Slovenia it is a beautiful place. It is really forest, but uh, very mountainous as well. So forestry is hard here, which makes the nature even more valuable for tourists and for hiking and for mountain climb climbing and all that kind of, of outdoor activities. Yeah, Slovenia is just a small place really, it, it, it's bordered by Austria and Croatia, Austria north, Croatia south, east it's bordered by Hungary and west by Italy. It's actually the shape of a running chicken, I look at my map here, look uh, at that yeah. Stefan, I'm staring at a map of Slovenia here, shape of a running chicken, there's a road runs from Hungary all the way through to Italy and a road from Croatia up to Austria, there's three roads and then the rest of it is all fairly mountainous, a, a fantastic place population of just two million and the population in Bohini is uh, just a couple of hundred uh, Bohini is not a village uh, not a town it's a valley actually a valley with uh, farms and some uh, cottages and some uh, uh, small hotels and hostels really beautiful place it's lots of uh, uh, agriculture here uh, old-fashioned agriculture tradition uh, with uh, yeah, some animals and some but mostly I think they are living here on the outdoor outdoor life a wonderful place for skiing in the winter and for hiking in the summer that she has a 47 kilometer ocean front on the Adriatic Sea oh. down by and 47 kilometers interestingly is enough to get all two million of the population on the beach at the same time <laughs> not a lot of people know that uh, they've each got a sunbed that is permanently in place on the 47k of Adriatic coast yeah. with their name on it. That might not be true, actually.
Two of the tail enders in the women's junior women's K1 coming into the portage now from Belgium. And I can't quite see the number on the other athlete. But, uh, That's what we are seeing on the screen is, uh, yeah, there, yeah, there they are. Yeah. We're going to need a bigger screen, Stefan. Yeah. There you go, running through the portage. You can see the difference in route there. Belgium nearest to us isn't stopping for her drinks. The top lane is for getting drinks from your team management. It was the Be Belgium, Belgian girl, uh, Lien uh, Smolders, who is doing her first international marathon here today. The Bel Belgian uh, team leader told me this morning that they are trying to build a new young team of marathon paddlers to replace Lisa Brocks and uh, all the other more famous names that are doing uh, mostly heading for a sprint and the, the Olympics in Rio uh, next summer. It's interesting to watch the flow of good teams and come and go over the years. You know, the Belgians had medals in the, in the senior men for a long time, didn't yes. they? With the uh, Bruno and Yanis uh, Werner were up there. And then all of a sudden it, it dies. Where, where are the Belgians these days? Eric Verduck was, uh, yeah. I think Eric competed in probably the first 52 world championships. Yes, something like that, <laughs> yes. He, and he's still around. He's so, still going yeah. now. So, yeah, but teams like that, the, the Dutch, always traditionally strong, Danish, Sweden. I mean, yes. where, where have your guys been for, yeah. for a while now? Yeah. And, and to a certain extent, Great Britain as well. We were one of the big nations originally now we, we scrape about for medals and we're just coming back we're making a resurgence now and I think your point about the Olympics you know teams take their good athletes away to try and qualify for the Olympics but in the UK now I think people are realizing your chance of Olympic success is so small that there's a resurgence in the marathon paddling they're coming back they can see they can do the world travel they can come to places like this they can get international experience they can get world championship european championship medals and actually come out of their canoeing career with something rather than just being yet another person who didn't quite make it to the olympics exactly and uh, the marathon racing is it's so much to do to do here it's uh, truly global it's a uh, very interesting races all over the world and we have this uh, international canoe federation uh, classic marathon series consisting of uh, t uh, 10 races all over the globe uh, that is river racing or or archipelago racing or lake racing um, from one point to another uh, covering uh, many many different uh, uh, types of, of racing all over the world in Africa in Australia in, in Europe in South America everywhere so it's really really uh, nice experiences to, to do all these races and in combination with this more formal formal uh, championships and World Cups it uh, creates a sport that is really providing both experiences and, and strengths and a lot of joy to, to the athletes. So many is uh, realizing that now when the Olympics get harder and tougher uh, that um, a marathon is something to go for. Yeah, it, it, it literally is life outside the fast lane. Yeah, it's it, this is this is fun, and yeah, everyone starts their sport for fun. Yes, and this is this is where it's at. You and uh, you always have a result in ma marathon in the sprint racing where it's uh, nine persons in per persons in the final. You do the heats, and uh, then it's over for for most of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're, now they've introduced the 200 meter racing, you can go all the way to an event, race for 35 seconds and come out of it with nothing. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it, there's a place for everything, obviously. And, and the sprint is fantastic. It's fantastic to watch the physicality of it. Yes, It's yes. more than impressive. Yeah. But it's not for everyone. And I think with all the professional, professional teams coming in, they're trying to make it for everyone so that they get their pick of the athletes, obviously. But uh, for the, most of the athletes, they will get a lot more out of this. Yeah, canoeing has really something for everyone. 
long distances to uh, short 200 meter dis distances. It is interesting, as you see, said, uh, nations uh, going up and down, and it's the same with clubs all over the world. It's yeah, going up yeah. and down. Oh, we're both fortunate enough to be at very well organized, very well run clubs. Yes, who've been successful through the years. But you're right. I mean, at the pinnacle for our club, I was telling you a couple of days ago in 1998 at the Marathon World Championships, our club, which has a sort of catchment area of one town in, in England, won more medals than any other nation. And now today we struggle to make the team even in the UK. So yeah, ups and downs due to coaching, due to the, the commitment of the athletes you've got, the quality of the athletes that come to you. But your club the same, I think. Your club has yeah. a majority of the Swedish team in the sprint athletes exactly and we were tra traditionally a marathon club we had most of the uh, marathon team uh, once but now we have 200 meters paddlers uh, mostly and it just uh, because the athletes and the youngsters were choosing that and were felt uh, it was suitable for them so it's uh, really something for everyone, creating quality of life. Yeah, I mean, in the early days when you're learning to paddle, it is just paddling. It doesn't matter whether it's short, long, rough water, flat water, it's just paddling. You yeah. learn your skills, you learn how it all works, and then you can specialize really quite late on. You're talking about Peter Manning, who, who's now winning the 200 meters. How old was he when he decided to do that? Yeah. I think it was 22 or something like that. Uh, it's a very good example of, of an athlete that uh, were just an average uh, paddler f uh, when he was young, really young, and then decided to to go for the uh, world championships gold medal to be best in the world in 200 meters when he was 22 or 20. Yeah, I think it was 22. Uh, specializing at a young age yes. is not necessary no. in a sport like no. this. Hey, we've got not. all the leaders coming in too. We should stop mumbling amongst yes. ourselves, Stefan, and get on with the job, probably. Yes. So, uh, in, in coming to the portage now, we've got the women's C1, and just behind them is also the women's K1. They're all going to arrive here pretty much within the next couple of minutes. Nothing changed in the C1, really, on that lap. Perhaps the French girl's a few seconds further behind than she was on the previous lap. But uh, Quite steady. Nice and steady. Both paddling quite well. These girls are doing four four uh, laps, which means uh, three portages. This is the second of those three. Out of the boat well, running well. I can't believe she's running that well. After I saw her yesterday around the athlete tents down there, she was limping badly with that knee. Eating the pain, probably, over the portage. There she goes, running through the portage. Nice and easy. Uh, she has some pa some pain, that's yeah. obvious. Yeah, that's not a comfortable. Yeah, you see her knee there is... Uh. But she's calm. She's not, she's going reasonably quickly, but she's not rushing well organized making sure she's comfortable in the boat and off she goes you could see how she balanced uh, herself by uh, adjusting her position in the boat by using the paddle on the pontoon and now uh, Catherine Rask into the portage on the other side of the portage we can see her there and she has really increased the gap Catherine Rask uh, into the portage running very fast comfortable yeah, she's looking safe at the front of that. What's yes. probably more interesting is that the third group has picked up to a group of four paddlers now, and they're hunting down the two in second and third. Someone in that third group will start to fancy their chances, I would think. Yes, yes. If they can work together to halve that gap, then somebody can jump the gap. Catherine Rask over the portage now. Not looking after a rudder too well there. So. No, no. <laughs> 
Yeah, there, there she's but doing it exactly yeah. the right way. Back in first. Yeah. And right at the end of the pontoon, so she can paddle uh, both very, sides very straight nice. away. Yeah, very nice. Denmark has a very good uh, marathon tradition and uh, good, good uh, competence among the trainers as well for marathon. Uh, that was obvious that uh, this girl is very experienced in that. A very nice portage from Catherine Rask. Second group are out and running already as the third group come in. And the one looking to be doing the it's, damage there it's is 40 seconds now. It's 40 seconds be between Catherine Rask and and, uh, and uh, Dominika Pet uh, from Hungary. I think that, yeah, I think that gap's unclosable now, isn't it? Yes. That's, that's ending. But I, th I think that the race for third place could be on. Yeah, that's the, apart from the fact that that third group all got out of their boat hideously slowly. They are, they're moving on the water faster than the second group. But it's still 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Yeah. yeah. That's that second group group through there. We've got Slovenia, um, Croatia rather. Denmark in green. Spain just getting in a boat on this side. That's Anna Correa. Oh no, that's Portugal, sorry. That's me being a beginner again, Stefan. I need education in this country. <laughs> what on earth? What is that? Seriously? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Yeah, yeah. Ah. Oh. That was very... <laughs> yeah. very unusual. At that point, we need some backing music, don't we, Stefan? Who would do that? So... She was uh, jumping into the boat from the end of On the, the end of, of the portage, of, 90 degrees of the, the direction of yeah. travel. Yeah, the, that could be a very dangerous thing to do if the group is uh, big. She's stopping uh, the other paddlers. What would have happened in the men's race there, Stefan? Yeah. Whoever was coming into the Ooh. side of her would have a lot just of gone crashing. through. Yeah, just yeah, gone yeah. through. Yeah, that's that's schoolgirl error, really. Very unusual. I, I don't think I've seen that before, no. actually. And now look what's happened to that group of four. They came yeah. into the portage with some hope of catching the two, yeah. and now they're just all over the place. It does look like Spain, doesn't it? The, yes. The oh. fourth place paddler now is Spain. Portugal? There is a por Portugal. You got, I think. Oh. So hard to see from the pictures we're getting here. I'm guessing you're seeing the same pictures as we are. Out in front we got Catherine Rask and Germany and Hungary where they've been throughout second and third. Much better organised than the following group. Yet the Hungarian still looks behind all the time. She's looking behind. They've got a simple decision to make right now. They just they have to get to the finish as yes. second and third. Yes. They can make the they can make the fine tuning on yeah. the last short lap as to who's going to come where. Maybe she's looking behind just to see if they are increasing the gap or not. Maybe. And just adjusting her effort to that. Yeah. Letting uh, letting. Um, or you do the classic, Stefan, where you look behind. And tell the other person to pull hard. Exactly, that's what I meant. That's what that's what I meant. <laughs> you just keep whipping the German girl to make exactly, her go faster exactly. to do your yeah. to do your work yes, for you. Exactly. One of those girls will have more fear than the other one. Yes. And the one with the most fear will do the most leading. Yes. And and oh, it could also depend a little bit uh, on the, their personal strength. Yeah. If you know your speed, you have enough strength and speed for the for a good in sprint really can rest yeah. a lot more than uh, if you use if you need to use your endurance to win we know dominica pito's got the raw speed she was the first off the yes. start line yes whether whether you can replicate that at the end of a 20k race or not is open to debate but you know the speed is in there somewhere yeah she'll have some confidence in that maybe she's just resting there on the, on the wash of of 
Julie Hake, uh, and uh, looking backwards to see when it's necessary for her to increase the do speed some work, yeah. and do some work. They've clearly and rightly, I think, given up on first place, those two. It's so flat, it's uh, absolutely no wind, so uh, the waves, the washes from, from the boats never end, never stops. It could could be a little bit bumpy out there just because of that. Yeah. Well, you can see the movement on the surface of the water just in shot now. Yeah. I'm a bit lost as to... I think that's the, the leading C1s, the second K1s. The leading C1s have been overtaken, it looks like, by Catherine Rouse. She's not in shot. The two second and third K1 followed by a fourth K1, who, with the sh shortening that this camera angle gives you, it looks like that fourth K1, she's certainly having a go at catching up. She's, she's made the break from the other two. She's decided they're not going to help her out, and she's giving it a shot on her own. Embarrassingly, neither of us know who she is, Stefan. <laughs> But if we just keep talking, the public should be happy with that, <laughs> I think. And into the portage now is um, uh, Ilaria Nitti from Italy in C1 Women. And she is together with um, uh, Ulrike Verstrate from uh, Belgium in the portage. Unfortunately, not shown on the screen. So uh, these girls are on their final uh, long lap. When they come to the portage once again, it's the final portage, and after that portage, it's just a short lap. It's uh, 500 meters, 250 meters up to the turn, and then uh, another 250 meter down to the to the finish line. So it's quite a, uh, quite a decisive portage, the la last one. It'd be interesting to find out from the Hungarians how they how these girls got into the C1, whether they yeah. choose to do it or whether there's a program, a national program to put them in. I know in the UK we've started a, a national program for the C1s. Um, how well that will do is open to debate always. We haven't really got a lot of coaching for C1 in the UK, whereas Hungary obviously have got a history of coaching in C1s. When I was uh, in Sigurd in Hungary last year, I saw lots of youngsters uh, uh, paddling C1 in their, as beginners, both uh, men and women, boys and girls. So I think they try to, to create a tradition uh, among youngsters as well for, for C1 paddling. C1 paddling is uh, uh, difficult in the open waters so it's more for rivers and, and congested areas um, while some nations like Sweden uh, has some difficulties to develop that just because of the nature of your water yes that you have there. yes many other na nations have, has the same it's not they are really very nice to use it. It, it is very nice to use uh, sea ones on calm small rivers and such uh, as you can see they are narrow and open and uh, if it's windy and a lot of waves it's difficult see the second and third k1 just catching up to the front the front of the c1 race there Coming down the straight into the portage, into the turn before the portage. Is, so that's the the gap. 
we've got a minute back to the second two and then only well under 30 seconds now between those second two and fourth place yeah, it's it's a full minute so it seems like um, as you said this race is That's done yeah there Katrin Rask has uh, 1 minute 8 seconds lead which means uh, 250 meters or so 200 at least and then that fourth place boat is Isabel Lopez Pinos from Spain great tradition of marathon racing in Spain after Hungary they're the most successful nation and always uh, different paddlers as uh, Hungary has um, some Spanish paddlers used to say that their selection races are much tougher than the, than the world's uh, we all say that though Stefan yeah, of course <laughs> <laughs> especially when we're winning the worlds and then you, yeah, then oh, you yeah. can claim that getting in your teams is harder than winning the world championships yeah. and but it's, it tells a lot uh, for most nations selection races are just a few paddlers but uh, in, in Hungary and Spain could be hundreds it depends I guess on the format they run them I mean in, in the UK we have races that are dedicated selection races and really only the people who are in with a chance of being selected turn up at those if you just have an open race and the winners get selected mm. then you have a lot of the field that were never in with a chance I guess it depends on the format a little yeah yeah for sure but certainly in Spain, their, their team, the men's K2s, they have different athletes in you know, over the years, yes. consistently mm. up at the top end. Mm. And it, it's so impressive to see. But then I, th I think there's a danger also of having the same old, same old people at the top end. It discourages the up and coming. Yeah, we're, we're in Spain at the moment. They've had their good guys there for quite a while now. I mean, Busto's obviously left recently, but Merchan is still there. And Alonso is still yeah. there. And it's hard then for the next set of guys to see a way of, of breaking into that. But they have been so good. So the gap uh, to the younger ones are so big. So many youngsters doesn't feel that they have any any opportunity to beat them, actually. Yeah. And Th and that, that could is, be a negative. Yes, yeah. that is um, one of the reasons that the nations goes up and down. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, the, the generation, our generation, GB team were very successful, and then after that had a big flat period before yeah. Ben Brown finally came back and yeah. and took a medal. Same for Sweden. We were one of the leading nation in the men kayak for many years, but. Uh, uh, it was really hard for the youngsters to keep up and when the old generation left it wasn't no one come, uh, coming from behind and it, it's not just the fact that those old guys are fast which they may or may not be but they've got so much experience by the time they come to race the young guys yes even if the young guys are, are physically better it, those old people are hard to beat a bit of wisdom on a race like this counts for an awful lot and uh, the frustration from some of the up-and-coming people is, is hard to take. So with uh, less than one big lap uh, to go, we have uh, in the lead uh, Katrin Rask, uh, one minute uh, nine seconds before uh, before uh, uh, Jule Hake. And then uh, follows uh, Dominika Pete, the Hungarian girl. And on the fourth position, uh, Pinos Lopez from Spain. And fifth is uh, Brigitta Bacic from Croatia. That is the top fa five in the girl race. So we've just had confirmation from our technical experts. There are actually people watching us, Stefan, and listening to us. Yeah.
just about 200, but uh, that's a fairly good uh, Friday morning. Um, so all those uh, watching us and following this race, uh, promote it to others. So we will have a lot of spectators for this wonderful event uh, in the afternoon. And especially tomorrow and on Sunday when the seniors are uh, racing. That will be really, really, uh, a really, really nice event. If the condition stays like this, this it will be fantastic. So today we have this um, session in the morning, and then at um, 11:30, uh, K1 women under 23 starts, and then C C1 men juniors and and they are racing uh, 11.30, uh, also K1 women under 23 and C1 men juniors. And then at uh, 14.45 there is uh, K1 men under 23, where uh, 25 athletes are starting, together with the C1 men under 23. 14.45. So there is the timing for today. 11.30 is the next session, women under 23 and C C1 men juniors, and then 14.45 uh, K1 men and C1 men. And now, now into the final portage, in splendid isolation, in the big, big lead, Katrin Rask from Denmark. Yeah, absolutely, that gap is so big now, there's no chance. Even the chase for third place now is off. There's, there's just the two of them. So the Spanish girl, Lopez Pinos, had a good go at that, but now she's being caught by the two that were with her at the portage before. But Catherine Rask, unassailable at the front there, coming into the portage. She stopped so early coming into the landing stage. There's room to do another two or three paddle yeah. strokes there, come in, but maybe, and just a little bit of a, she had stumble a little, getting yeah, out. Yeah, it was a little bit slipper, slippery on the pontoon, but she managed that uh, well. And she she can really afford an accident here. Yeah. She has more than a minute, I think one minute, 15 seconds or so, uh, a gap to uh, to the second group. You can see her drinking from a drink system there. At this stage, that's just to quench your thirst rather than to provide any energy. A thousand yeah. meters to go. She's not she's not going to run short of energy for that, but it is horrible to be paddling along with a dry mouth. And so the real race then for second and third coming into the portage as Catherine Rask leaves. Oh, they, they've, they've got another 30 seconds to get to the portage yet. So we're following Catherine Rask uh, when she approach uh, the, her final 500 meters. And here we go, so it's Peto, the Hungarian in the white boat, followed by uh, the German, Julia Haak. And Julia, Julia Haak that had an eighth position in the, the European Championships last year. He's now heading for a bronze or a silver medal together with Dominika Peter from Hungary into the port, and this will be decisive for him. If it comes to a final sprint, you'd have to favour the Hungarian, but she's been so poor on the portages so yes. far that if Jula Hart can get enough distance here, then perhaps, you know, how much how much distance do you need to break away? Three, four lengths, maybe? Yeah, maybe something like that. Uh, side by side, up uh, up into the portage. If, if uh, Peto gets in the water in touch with the German there, then you would have to favour the Hungarian. Neither of them uh, making a break on the running. If they can both get in cleanly. I think they're quite uh, exhausted. They're doing what they can there, si side by side. This is where accidents can happen. Front of the boat goes in too soon. But no. Both being quite cautious. And Hungarian away first. Yes. Oh, You'd this say that's be... pretty much decided yep. there. Yeah. I would. Yeah, it's all very well. You can be. And now she she realised that uh, she uh, that uh, the Julia is uh, off uh, her watch, and now she's doing full speed. 
Which could be dangerous. I mean, if if she hasn't got the energy to get back at full speed yeah. and uh, gets caught in the last 500 meters, then yeah. then game on again. But it's just actually it's just uh, 500 meters to go. Uh, in this short lap is 200, 250 meters out there to the turn where um, uh, Katrin Rask is uh, right now so um, but Jule Hake has not given up she's struggling now really really trying to, to catch the wash but I I don't think she will be able to do it actually the beauty on a lake of this size and when it's this flat you can move out and yes. move, use those waves to catch up. Yes. She hasn't done that. She's no. tucked in right behind her. But if you know, a wise paddler at this stage would move out, run in on one of the waves that's joining her to the back of the Hungarian boat. Of course, the wash is, uh, forms a V um, behind the flying leading boat. And it's possible to use that V to gain some ground. 200 meters to go for Katrin Rask. Uh, 200 meters to go from Katrin Rask, and we will soon have her uh, into the camera. Just watching some of the back end tail enders there. And that is um, 54 uh, Anna, Anna Correa. Correa from Portugal, who was among the, the top, uh, top group in the early stages of the race. But now. Uh, Soon we have uh, Catherine Rask. If we can have a camera on her, she is less than uh, yeah, about 100, 150 meters to go. Catherine Rask, uh, that is heading for a gold medal, another gold medal for for Denmark. We have seen uh, Danish girls taking medals um, a lot over the years. A very good uh, marathon nation, Denmark, especially for for women. And now they have another one on the, on the run. That is Katrin Rask. Who is doing in a very, very impressive race uh, this morning on Lake Bohin. Winning uh, with uh, more than a minute. Really, it's only the Danish girls and the GB girls that ever challenged the Hungarians for medals in these women's events. So yeah, both both countries have a strong tradition. At this stage, Stefan, she's coming in. See her coming to the finish there, speeding things up. I'd, I'd be more tempted to slow down and milk my moment here, yeah. Stefan. <laughs> she's, she's rushing it, it's a big she, moment. Sure, propaganda for the sport. Catherine Rask, Denmark, uh, European uh, champion, uh, women junior uh, marathon in Bohin 2015. Catherine Rask, Denmark. Great smile there. Just touching up the hair and makeup for the cameras. And a big day for her. That's a fantastic result. Often when you come into a race as the favourite and knowing that you've got a chance of winning, the biggest emotion crossing that line is not joy but relief. And it's, it's what you should have done. It's what you're hoping to do. And the relief is fantastic when that line actually comes. I don't have a mic. I don't have a microphone, but um, maybe she could come here. And the fight for the silver medal is uh, is done. It is uh, Hungary, Hungary, Dominic uh, Peter, Dominic Peter that will uh, will have the silver medal. She's, um, she made a decisive effort um, after the final portage and uh, has secured the silver medal for herself. Silver medalist to is uh, Dominika Peter from Hungary. It must be quite tough being one of the Hungarian women. You know, that's just another medal to add to the tally. It's not a personal thing anymore. It's not. Yeah, in many of the other countries, oh, this German medal. And this is uh, Jule Hacke, Jule Hacke winning a bronze medal for Germany. And uh, that was, um, that is uh, quite uh, unusual actually. Yeah, like yeah, saying that, that's a big medal for Germany. It, whereas it the is Hungarian a big medal, medal yeah. in theory is a better medal, but it's just another one. And yes, for but for, Hacke, for them, uh, for them personally, yeah. it is of course uh, very, very nice. 
and they are so pleased and so satisfied these girls with their medals of course it's always nice just to go home with something you know it, it is it, and it for is. the next girl across the line from spain that's fourth place yeah, a huge gap on the others just from doing her portage well at the last portage and fourth position is is Ana Correa, Ana Correa from Portugal. No, that's, I'm going to have to correct you there, Stefan. That's Isabel Lopez Pinos from Spain. Ah, yeah, that's right. Lopez uh, Pinos, of course, and 64. It's going to be Spain. Lopez Pinos is the fourth position. And fifth is uh, fifth is uh, Portugal, Ana Correa. And then from Poland. And then Poland, 66. yes. Maja uh, Koslowska. Poland have got a very strong women's squad in the sprint system. Yes. And so you'd expect some of the people who can't quite make that to come here and do very well. But we don't often see Polish women doing so no. well. No. Very seldom, actually, in a Polish women in, a, in a top marathon racing. Uh, next across, Anna Sledjo from Norway. Anna Sledger from Norway, who also participated last year, uh, where she finished ninth. And we used to race her dad back in the day. <laughs> well, I did, at least he used to be in the sprint team more. He used to race for Norwegian. Exactly. Norwegian in the Norwegian K4, occasionally K2. And her mother had a gold medal in the World Championships in marathon racing back in 1990 in uh, Copenhagen. Ingeborg Rasmussen. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. who in turn is the sister of the mad inventor of the wing paddle. Exactly. A lot of family tradition there. Petra Jesenski, Hungary. And across the line, first of the C1s, another gold medal for Hungary, another to add to the tally. And the first, for the first time ever, a gold, gold medal in C1 Women Juniors. And it goes to Gaiara Bragato from Hungary. Fifty-eight there. Pierre Engelhardt, also from Germany. Germany have had a good day in the Very good. women's. Very good. And the second silver in C1 Women Juniors to Pauline Martin from France. Historical medals here in C1 Women Juniors. First time ever at the Euro European Championships in Marathon. 67 there, Everson from Denmark crossing the line. Fell back through the field gradually, as, as we suspected. She worked hard early on, lost touch yeah. with the group, spent a lot of time on her own. And you pay a price. And this is the beauty of this uh, of the time schedule we are using in marathon racing. Uh, all the categories are finishing uh, almost within uh, 10 minutes, all of them. Two more girls coming in now. Green and black boat from Spain. And across the line, number 65, just before the Spanish girl, another Polish athlete. So two Poles, two Germans in this field, which is quite unusual, really. Not unusual for a Spanish. <laughs> no. And third C1 could also be Spanish. It is Spanish and it is uh, Belén Orno from Spain that is uh, winning the bronze medal for in uh, C1 Women Juniors. Hungary, France and Spain. Three big marathon nations and also very good uh, Canadian paddling nations. Long traditions there in the, each country for C1 paddling. Berlin Arno, Spain.
I'll go and see if I can find them, find any of these girls to make an interview. And I'll stay here and wrap up the tail enders as they come across the line. Yes. So number 29 in the C1, second Hungarian there, Fuzina Miskolski. Not enjoying the fortunes of her teammate across the line first. To be fair, it must be pretty tough being a Hungarian and not coming home with a medal. But yeah, C one's a very young sport. We, you have no idea how long or how short a time these girls have been paddling C ones. This will be the first step on a journey for them, either through the marathon world if it continues in marathon, or up the ladder into the sprint world in their own countries, hoping to get Olympic qualification in 2020. Boat 59 crossing the line there. That's French, France, uh, Romain Huey. Paddled most of the way on her own today, which I could never relate to. I, I needed company. So it'll be good to see if we can get any of the winners into the commentary box for an, an interview. Or maybe Stefan, who's, who's left me here alone now. I'm alone on a microphone to the entire world. So hopefully Stefan will be back with one of the winners. Everything's calming down now before the second session in the late morning. And we're just left to enjoy the view. For anyone listening out there, we could use some feedback. Um, there were some technical difficulties this morning with getting the internet up and running and the sound system and indeed the cameras. Um, any feedback on what we've produced and volumes etc. I've already had one message that's saying the volume's low on the, on the output. Um, any feedback that could help us improve for the second and subsequent sessions would be gratefully received. You can on Facebook Ivan Lawler or on Twitter at Ivan underscore Lawler and we will get those messages assuming our internet is running and we will make any changes we can through the day and through the weekend to make our live feed slightly better. If there's anything you need us to talk about or think we should be talking about equally come to us with your suggestions and we'll either ignore them or take them on board depending how relevant they are. So scenes here from the beautiful Lake Bohine, magical place. In fact, this is the place where Hansel and Gretel was written. I've seen the cabin in the woods myself, only yesterday. That might not be true, but it looks like it could be, doesn't it, Stefan? What? It looks like Hansel and Gretel could have been written in these very woods. Yeah, here. yeah, absolutely. It is definitely fairy tale territory around here. It's not like the Norwegian fjords, but um, with the trolls in the uh, on the mountains. But uh, this is even more beautiful, warmer, and the water is crystal clear. It's just wonderful. Crossing the line there, 57 from Belgium, Ulrika Verstrat. She had a tough day out there on her own again for most of the day, as as most of the tail enders are. You know, it, all these races you'll see through the weekend. Front groups are well, well organized. The tail enders spend a lot of time on their own. There's a lot of thinking time when you're out there on your own. Not all positive thoughts as well. But they're uh, probably enjoying themselves. They are at a big event and uh, many of these youngsters, it's first time they are coming. So, and it's Do you still nice remember battle. your first event, international event? 
I think so, yes. It was a lousy K2 race. Mine also. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, but it is amazing. Like you say, they remember their first yeah. event. I, yeah. I remember mine. There weren't junior events back then. It was senior ah. It was senior World Cups. Mine was a senior World Cup in uh, Hardenburg, I think. Yeah. In, uh, yeah, actually, I, I did I one. I won't mention the year because that's just in too I far I did ago. one uh, as a junior as well in K1 to the Gudenau. Oh, it, it was yeah, a nightmare. <laughs> I, I, I had the opposite experience. My Tour de Gouda experience was a very positive one. So I've never been back since because I knew I couldn't replicate that. <laughs> so I will never go back there because the first experience was too good. Ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, it's time to close down this uh, morning session and we will be back again at um, uh, 11.30 and uh, yeah, actually 11.25 to start to um, commentate on um, um, women under 23 uh, and the C1 men juniors. So please uh, follow us also then, 11.30, K1 women under 23 and C1 men juniors. Welcome back to the European Championships in Canoe Marathon from Bohin, Slovenia. It's wonderful conditions this morning here. Uh, mirror flat lake and now we are uh, watching K1 women under 23. A category that is developed uh, just to make it a little bit easier, easier for young paddlers to uh, get into the real racing of uh, World Marathon. A very interesting, uh, very interesting start line. Um, there are many, many paddlers with good record from uh, junior, their time as juniors, but also as seniors. In the lead uh, here, it is Vanda Kisli uh, from Hungary. Vanda Kisli from ha Hungary in their traditional green t-shirts, uh, track suits, and uh, also Stefania Sikali, uh, Susanna Sikali from Italy. Susanna Sikali, who was uh, third at last year, uh, when uh, Vanda Kisli <coughs> from Hungary uh, won in Oklahoma in the World Championship. So it's Vanda Kisli and Susanna Sikali. Uh, Susanna was fourth in Oklahoma and she was third at the uh, uh, Europeans last year. It's many others that have good uh, records of uh, marathon racing as well in this, uh, in this race. Uh, together with me here is uh, Ivan Lawler, who will help to commentate on this. And what do you think of this race so far, Ivan? Well, you can already see, comparing it to the junior race this morning, that it's more organised. They're more educated already. They form one group. The two main contenders are already at the front. Kisley leading, Sakali second. And the other people are filling in the gaps at the moment. We've got two Spanish athletes and the Danish athlete right up there. So all the main nations are hitting the front where they should be. It's a shame we've got no British entrant up the front end of this. We had uh, Sam Reese clark last year who got a medal at the World Championships. But we got Jenny Illich, who's always there for us. She'll come through later on. First lap's not her strong point, but yeah, everyone has their strong points and hers is the latter stages of the race. And it, uh, on, the, on the line-up uh, on the, uh, of this... Um uh, of, the, of this group of women under 23 is uh, quite different this year uh, since last year. Last year we had uh, Nike Vakvacai who uh, won from Hungary uh, before uh, uh, Michaela Lindblad from Sweden and then Susanna Sikali uh, from Italy on the third uh, position. Uh, Anemia, Anemia Pretzman who is also among uh, the girls racing here today was uh, uh, fifth uh, last year and uh, we'll see how she does today Denmark who had a gold medal uh, previously today in the K1 women junior You're looking at the camera shots there it's fairly relentless speed going up there they're all pressing on it's not a comfortable number of people in the group I think you, we've got six athletes there 
Yeah, and I've seen uh, Vanda Kisli even since uh, she won in K2 back in uh, 2011 as a junior in the World Championships in in Singapore. Uh, she also had a gold medal in the, in Oklahoma uh, in this under uh, under 23 category last year. And she likes the high speed. Uh, she seems to be trying to copy Renata Che, uh, he, he, her older uh, teammate that uh, have done so much on the marathon courses all over the world. She, she, uh, Vanda Kisli really likes the high, like the high speed, and she is uh, heading the group now there. And we know also that uh, Susanna Shikali is a very very good athlete with many many good results since uh, she was a junior. The high yeah. speed strategy is great, provided there's not a big sprinter with you who wash hangs well exactly. and uses you as their, their their donkey to get you around the course. Mm. You, know? you have to know the other athletes fairly well if you're going to set off like that. The C1s are now away. There's eight in this race. All the usual suspects in terms of nations. Hungary closest to us. It's David Lelelovic. And on the far side, the other Hungarian doesn't seem to be making quite the same progress. Third up from the bottom is from Poland. Poland traditionally a strong C1 nation. And then one up from him is a German athlete. And it's actually um, mostly new paddlers. We haven't seen many of them before. Uh, no big uh, track records of any of them in uh, under 23 racing uh, previously. Some of them have participated as juniors, but uh, most of them are new actually, which uh, is good for the sport, of course. It's good for the sport, but I think the reason you have maybe a bigger turnover in the C1s is because with the reduced numbers in the sport generally, more go through to the other sprint categories and sprint competitions. So they use the marathon as a as a conduit to the sprint teams for some of them. And that that's one of the purposes that marathon can be used for. An awful lot of the top end, even Olympic medalists in the kayak events have come through marathon. Yes, uh, pretty much so. It's very good training uh, all for all uh, distances. Uh, maybe except for 200 meters, but for all other di disciplines, it's a really good training, this uh, marathon racing. You say that, Stefan, but even Ed McKeever, who's Olympic champion in the 200, he grew up in the in the marathon system in the UK. He did, okay. Yeah, he, he did all the all the stuff. He competed in the marathon in the marathon team for Great Britain as a junior. And uh, yeah, he's gone on to specialize and do 200 meters. So yeah, basic paddling is basic paddling. It doesn't matter how or where you do it. Of course. and. Uh, and they need to train to be able to train. So why uh, long distance training provides strength enough to, to uh, sustain the, the tough training on, on the shorter distances as well. And I, I think the longer distance encourages your body to find the most efficient way of paddling, which once you're efficient, you can do what you like with that efficiency. You can yeah. go faster, you can go longer, you can do what you like. And the top group is now approaching uh, the first turn. The, uh, the course um, they are doing uh, here is uh, uh, the women is doing six laps um, on uh, a course about uh, uh, four kilometers long. And the first lap is without portage. Uh, all the other laps are with portage. It's where the paddlers need to jump out their boats and running across the 100 meter 100 meter portage jump in once again and continue this first uh, turn is one uh, about uh, 1.8 kilometers from the start and uh, it's still hungry in top it's a quite a big group it's a big group and it's a well organized group stefan we've, we've got people in the right places on the washes spanish girl in the pink boat there tucked neatly into the v behind the leader she's resting as best she can the unfortunate one in this group is the other Spanish athlete in the yellow boat, second washout from the leader. We all know that's not ideal. It's, it's some help, but it's not as much help as the other washes. She's going to need to change something if she wants to stay there for long, especially at the speed they're traveling. And they are leaving good room for each other around the, around the turning boys, as experienced ma marathon paddlers always does. It's interesting when you hear people who don't race much marathon, they always 
think of marathon as having a bit of contact and a bit of pushing and a bit of shoving and that's just not the case once you're educated the last thing you need is physical contact with another boat i know we talked about that off off air earlier but yeah nobody in that group wants to touch anybody else if they can possibly help it exactly and uh, avoid crashes is uh, one of the great skills and you could, could see the speed increase around the turn there but uh, they gave enough room for everyone to pass uh, very nicely around the tur turning boys up there and uh, by this system you can uh, follow uh, who is who if we tell the names and we will do that and 162 who is in in the lead is um, uh, Boruka Braun from from Hungary uh, the names have come up on screen now for 54 yeah, is Sikali Maswaj is go he's tucked in the back nicely in the pink boat 151 She's also racing women's senior K2 tomorrow, and yeah, she's she's had some results in yeah. the past as well. And we have also Jen Illich there from Great Britain and Moa Inquist from Sweden, just uh, 14, 15 seconds behind. Yeah, for Jen Illich, that's a great place to be right now. She's often a long way behind early on, and she'll come through the field later on. Just 14 seconds behind on the first lap, I would say, is a very positive first lap for her. It's the same with uh, Moa Inquist. She is uh, an, an a very endurant paddler like the long distances uh, and will just be there and then go and I think uh, both of them are the same there well with they, a perfect work, pairing yeah, then for perfect, them yeah, perfect it can't pairing. be better yeah. the last thing you need if you're one of the, the grinding on and on paddlers is to have some soft sprinter with you exactly. who's just going to use you and use you yeah. be no help but if the two of them have got the same personality that could be yeah they could come back from there absolutely it's, not over. it's just 15 seconds yeah. uh, gap now over the first two kilometers or so but the speed was uh, quite high in the top group yeah c1s there fanned out across the lake again as we discussed this morning with the junior women's c1 washing is just not so simple and not so convenient i think when you haven't got the rudder it's, it disturbs your paddling too much so often the c1 races look like that like a bomb's gone off in the middle of the field and spread them <laughs> all over the lake but that's how it's, that's how they like it yes and who is throwing the bomb now seems to be Czech Republic uh, in the lead uh, we'll see better when they pass the first turn there 1.8 kilometers uh, 1750 meters to be precise uh, at, to the first turn it's hard to see in this light who's who that looks like a Hungarian though to me thinking that uh, David Lelovic he was first off the start and then the pole in second place there as they go around that top turn so number 108 it's not it's Daniel Laxo who was relatively slow off the start he was fairly very well down the pack. So then followed by 105, Nowaki from Poland, the other Hungarian and someone in a blue boat. <laughs> there we have them. Okay. Laszlo, Nowaki, Kumpes and uh, Lelolovic. So for those of you that weren't with us this morning, the setting here is unbelievably beautiful. It's the nicest lake you've ever seen, certainly the nicest lake I've ever seen and watched a race on. Mirror flat, surrounded by mountains, sun shining. We're sat here looking out onto a perfect vision really. It is, it's absolutely amazing. And Bohemia and Slovenia is uh, one Eden of uh, Europe. Uh, it's like traveling 40 years behind, uh, back 40 years back in time, uh, coming here. Tranquility is great, and the nature is fantastic. 
it's just so nice and the conditions for marathon canoeing is excellent absolutely excellent there we get a shot of Jenny Illich and um, Moore and Chris Moore and Chris and they're, they're, if they're both like we say then they're just going to be happy to trawl on around there yes. and pick up the stragglers as they fall off the front group and they are at 7th or an 8th position or something like that yep. and, and just a quick change of lead there Rinquist, yep, straight through and pressing on. So, yeah. Yeah, that's that's exactly how they shall work, these two, <coughs> two girls. Taking on turn for about three minutes or so yeah. each and then just go for it. Maybe they should stop to set the stopwatch. I remember one race I did with Lars Koch and yeah. Tor Nielsen and they did that to us. It was myself and Graham Burns and Lars Koch. He stopped and he set his watch and he said, right, now we do three minutes each. <laughs> Uh, and he was he was the king, so I did what I was told. Uh, <laughs> I, used to, I also used to count strokes. Right. 270 strokes was uh, about four minutes. So did that and then forced someone else to, to do the job. Yeah. But it's really nice to be able to do the do it that way because you don't need to to do any big efforts to kind of avoid the lactase acids yep. and and uh, just using the endurance going at a perfect speed for for uh, your body well you hope with with a pair like that though if you're the if the one of you is weaker every lead gets harder and the rest gets less and less mm -hmm. when it's your turn on the wash and eventually you snap yeah, yeah. so provided they're well matched that could be a very useful partnership. Currently looking out across the lake, we can get a view from our commentary box. It looks like they're about 30, 40 seconds behind the main group. But with six laps to go, there's, uh, or five and a half laps to go, um, Jenny is taking the lead again there. They are gonna pick up some stragglers off that front group at some stage. It seems that uh Jenny wasn't that pleased of the speed because she's uh, once again taking on the hard work in top. Yeah, but that balance can change later yes, in the race. If absolutely. You do it while you're feeling good. The other girl will help you out mm. when she's feeling good. And now uh, the top group uh, into the turn and we hope that we can get the cameras uh, on them now. Um, the top group into the first uh, their first turn. Brian Chapman, who is running uh, the cameras and producing it for us, can direct uh, the cameras step, to there. Step it up, Brian. Step yeah. it up, man. And he does. There they there are. There he is. Oh, no. No, he's back to the C ones. But the girls are coming around. The two main contenders at the front, Kisley Sakali, safely round. Second Hungarian there, Braun, joining them very quickly. And then is uh, Spanish athlete, Massages, who, if she can get back into that diamond, will be uh, smiling all over. And she looks like she's going to do that. It's brown, brown in top, and it's uh, Shikali in her blue tracksuit. Um, uh, Susanna Shikali from Italy, and it is uh, Vanda Kisli. Vanda Kisli, who uh, has a gold medal from under 23 in the World Championships in Oklahoma last year and had a gold medal uh, already as a junior back in 2011 in K2. She's on the, the third position there, <coughs> right in the wash. And as we saw this morning, they are not forming a diamond, strange enough. Just bringing up into the back of that group, you got Anna-Marie Pretzman. She's always there or thereabouts, but no, yes. no big results yet. She was fifth uh, last year in the European Europeans, and she's always there, as you say, uh, among the top ten and and uh, racing good. Yeah. I think she had a medal back in uh, 2012 in the World Cup in Copenhagen. Um, so she had she have had some medals. But and we've already had a Danish medal this morning. We had yes. a Danish win this morning. Yes. On the coach's birthday, incidentally. Thomas, okay. Thomas Christian. Happy birthday, Thomas. So what what better birthday present than to have your athletes doing well on the day? That's great. Denmark, that uh, 
produ always produces very good uh, female marathon paddlers. They have a fantastic, amazing track record in K2 racing, uh, female K2 racing over the years. Really, it's only them that have challenged Hungary in the recent, yes. in recent yeah. years for the medals. I mean, Great Britain have in the past as well, had a couple of wins. But uh, yeah, Denmark are, are pretty much the nemesis of Hungary in the women's K2. Yeah. And uh, one of their top clubs there, Silkeborg, is uh, one of the organizers of the Tour de Guden or one of the classic marathons. And I think the tradition of that club is uh, for marathon is really great and beneficial for Denmark. Many other good clubs as well, of course, as uh, Maribu, uh, that produces so many good uh, paddlers currently in Denmark. And of course, uh, in previous times, also Lyngby, who uh, Used to organise the races in Bagsvad, so the, in Copenhagen. So what many makes times. for a good club, Stefan? Why why are they good clubs? Yeah, why are they good clubs? I think enthusiasm from uh, some people with a heart in the sport is the most important, uh, actually. And then uh, good organisation and uh, good thinking that uh, everybody should should be able to participate in in their way and you need, need to develop each each individual individual according to that indi individual specific skill and uh, willingness and then it all comes with the heart and enthusiasm yeah i think i think the heart and enthusiasm is probably the, the key to it all yes. i mean uh, our club in in the uk we have a coach who's been there every day at seven o'clock in the morning and six o'clock at night every day in living memory and it's that consistency that clubs need absolutely and you have produced so many very good paddlers there and that's how it is especially in all these clubs uh, where coaching is done by uh, volunteers Volunteers and am amateurs yeah. yes yeah there are there are national structures that have paid coaches of course the hungary yes. being one yes. of those and you know just the quantity of athletes and coaches demands that probably but for most countries it's amateurs so the c1s are coming around the bottom turn now um you can't get them on screen we're still looking at the back of the t uh, the uh, leading women's group well that's all kicking off as well so that is uh, and now we're back to the c1s so hungary poland coming around it was interesting. Poland were leading down into this turn. Looked like he had, you know, he'd caught up and was beginning to take control. But he's Hungarians, doing an effort now. Yeah, he's really going fast. He, he went really fast around this uh, turn, and you can see he's using his pedal on the, the left ha left side of the boat, which is very beneficial around this turn that is clockwise, uh, while while the Polish guy paddles on the right hand side. So I think he used uh, used that uh, benefit uh, for himself, the, this Hungarian paddler. Yeah, and he, he's really made a break. That could be that could be the break. The Polish guy doesn't look like he's in the mood for catching up. Two more behind him, equally not really pressing on. So, yeah, I, I was just about to comment, but when they're coming into the turn, the Polish guy seemed to have taken control of the race. Lucky I didn't. I would have looked quite foolish, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, C1 as normal, pretty much well strung out. Eight athletes in it, probably averaging a 10 second gap between all of them. And uh, that race will play out in its own way over the next hour and a half or so. And most of these athletes uh, are probably doing their very first uh, international uh, marathon race, the C1 men juniors. It's a great testing ground. I mean, the Hungarians obviously have a culture of C1 paddling. In Sweden, not so much so. No. Uh, in the UK, we have had in the past. I mean, we had the Train Brothers. Yes. In the sprint side, we had Eric Jameson as well to add to that Olympic finalist. We have had the the, the C1 culture in the past, but it's it's left us recently. It's same in same in Sweden and same in Denmark as well, <coughs> and I think it's the same in many in many countries actually. But it's coming back now, according to the ICF uh, development program, 
So I know that Denmark has started a C1 a C effort and also in Britain, I think. Well, we tried a, well, a talent ID program for C1. So we got some athletic guys in to try and take C1 on. It hasn't really panned out. And because of the way the politics was, it, it's almost suppressed the development of the club athletes back then. Now with those top ones gone, or the, or the favoured group gone, the, the, the club athletes are coming back up. And yes, we've got quite a good little group back in the UK again of, of C1s, at least in the sprint world. Mm. No one takes on the marathon yet, even though they moan quite a lot that they're not allowed in or, or they're, there's a bias against them. They don't turn up to the assessment races. You can't get selected if you don't turn up, I'm guessing. Oh, of course. So there go the under-23 women around the top turn. It's all calmed down. We Last time we saw them, there's a little flurry of activity. And it's all just testing. We, we talked about it this morning, the junior women. Every now and then, you've got to put a test out to see what the other people in your group are capable of. It's You need to know that for later on in the race when things get slightly more important. But it's Kisley in the lead. Braun, Sicali. Fernandez, Massages and Pretzman, but a group's a group. Who knows who the best in that group is? It might well be the person who's hiding away in fourth place. But it's a little bit interesting, though, that uh, Kisley and Brown and Shikali is uh, always in top, all the time in top, uh, these three uh, very good uh, paddlers. We haven't seen uh, Brown uh, around uh, on the marathon courses uh, before, not at least I haven't. But you can be sure that Brown has raced Kisley in Hungary. They know each other very well. Yes. They will be... Uh, Absolutely. They'll be fully aware of each Absolutely. other's capabilities. Yeah. And I mean, Veni uh, Vekshai, Enike Vekshai is also under 23 and she is not racing here. That means could mean that Brown is better this year. So they have lot, lots of, of uh, very, very good paddlers and their selections for such events as this is uh, really tough. So they are both very good and uh, we know that Shikali is also a very, very ambitious and good uh, paddler. Look, looking through Shikeli's results, though, we talked about it before we started commentary today, when things go well for her, she gets very good results. Yeah. But also on her resume over the years are an awful lot of did not finish results. When things have got tough, maybe she's not up for the fight if it gets too tough. She's yeah. also racing K2 with her exactly. sister tomorrow. So, so that's in the back of her mind exactly. as well. Exactly, and they, they have always done that. And and they, when things go good, she finishes. And when it's not uh, according to her ambition, she used to uh, save a little bit of strength uh, for the K2 together with her sister, Stefania, that is also a top-of-the-world paddler. Susanna and Stefania Shikali from Italy. And Italy have got a history anyway. I mean, um, uh, Intrioni yes. has been world champion in the past from Italy. So She's a trainer here. Yeah. Training some of the, the Finland yes. athletes. Yes. I'm not sure what the connection is there. It might be quite interesting to find out. But mm. again, in the, in the women's race now, it's kicking off. Somebody's testing something. Each time this happens, you learn something new. And it's interesting to see uh, how Finland managed now. They have uh, in Trioni as a trainer, but they are also Susanna Gunnarsson. Okay. Uh, who, uh, Susanna Gunnarsson, for those who is new in marathon, who who won uh, many gold medals uh, back in the 90s uh, for Sweden. Well, we were having that theoretical chat a couple of days ago over who would be the best if yeah. they were all the best. And, and we'll, we'll save that for the senior women's race probably, but... It's an interesting discussion. Susanna Gunnarsson is obviously up there with the best of the best. Yeah, and, and Anna Hemmings. Yeah. yeah. Anna Hemmings from Great Britain. We won't get into the detail now. We'll no. say, well, we've got to keep some powder dry, Stefan. Sure, Palacon. We're here for the whole weekend, man. <laughs> Can't spend all our good stuff on the under-23s. No. <laughs> so when, when you see the, the group speed up like that, it's interesting to see who's consistently in those front three mm. and who's consistently exactly. never opens up a small mm. gap. Mm. We, we see Pretzman there. Each time that happens, a small gap opens and she closes it again. It opens and she closes. And there's only so many opens and closes you can do in one day. Yes. So, but it's a little bit interesting that uh, we can see no one that is uh, really going for being in the, uh, on the gold wash in the diamond, as you yeah. did always. 
Well, yeah, and then when I watch this, it just astounds me that yeah. that it doesn't happen. It's mm. it's just easier. Yeah. If, you, if you can tuck in behind the leader and between the two on either side of her, life just gets easier. I think maybe the second Hungarian... I oh, know, oh is, is it still... I think it's still in the pink boat, massages. She's She yeah. has been there. You know, if anyone's been there consistently, mm. it's her. And then they actually don't know much about her while she's in there because she's never tested. Yeah, yeah, she's never stressed. Exactly. And and she could she could provide a surprise for them at the end. They need to do something with her. And the massages has a, a quite a good experience. Uh, she w- was a junior already in 2011 in Singapore, where she finished uh, seventh. And um, uh, she's from Spain, so, so she's used to uh, to good marathon racing and have probably good tactical skills. And good tactical skills on a race like this can far outweigh good physicality. Absolutely, absolutely. There's many a sprinter has come down and tried a marathon. Oh, yeah. And everyone, it's always the talk of the town, right? A yes. sprinter turns up, oh, he's going to be this, he's going to be that, he's going to do this, do that. No one can keep up with him. Mm. Always, what they, it's always, oh, he can do three minutes 40 for 10,000 meters at 1,000 meter speed. And do you know what? They never win. They don't. I think the only exception to that was Eric Larson. Yes, and he just but, went. But you know what? He grew up in marathon. He came through the marathon to start mm. with. Then he went to sprint. And then he mm. came back. Mm. And Eric Larson was able to do the tactical yes. stuff as well. Yes. But this is this is this is not a game for a sprint monkey who fancies no. their chances. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And we have seen that happen many times. I remember the World Championships in Perth, 2005, where the Norwegians came uh, with uh, quite a good tactics. A uh, lot three very very skillful sprint paddlers and they set off the first five kilometers in kind of thousand meter speed yeah and crashed crashed themselves and the most of the of the start line yeah. actually yeah. really destroyed the race and they didn't win but so. if you're a clever guy and you have someone like that it's just like being given a, a gift yes you know there, there's somebody who's prepared to put in a lot of work at yeah. high speed and and that's just a gift yeah Last year, we had some uh, some other good sprinters uh, coming into uh, to the World Cup, I think it was, and uh, or if, or the European Europeans, and uh, uh, they couldn't manage the tactics, so the, one of them chose to make his, his own race beside the group. Uh, and <laughs> always, he, always wise, yeah, always yeah. wise. And he he lasted half the race or yeah. so in the lead, and then fell off yeah. totally. Shikali in top now, uh, Stefania, uh, Susanna Shikali. We are used to see her in that uh, position. She likes that. It's Kisley to her right. This is quite telling. They're head to head. This matters to both of and them. Now, and now they are preparing for, for the first portage. They are coming in now around this uh, turn and then into the portage. And they are uh, now fighting for initiative uh, to be able to get up first in this uh, portage. Okay, so Kisley knows that now she can overtake if she needs yes. to. Also, Sikali knows this. She has to change her plan yeah. if she wants to. If she wants to win, she can't come into the finish. Sikali is perfectly po- positioned there on the outside now. Uh, she that that is the, the absolutely best position around the turn. And then uh, in, into the pontoon, we'll see if they choose the same line. Now, uh, massages is coming still in. Still in, still in the V wash. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be very telling who comes out of this portage and who's prepared to go. Yeah. If Massages isn't fast enough on the water and she doesn't come out of the portage in this position, she won't make it back to the group. Exactly. But if she's resting, she's doing very, very well. And Kisley is uh, still uh, holding the initiative. Uh, Susanna, Susanna is uh, going as tough as she can now. This will be a very interesting portage. It's a big group. There's going to be... There's going to be a failure out of this group. Yes, I imagine. absolutely. Somebody's not going to make this. But yeah. secondly, why would you why would you try and overtake her when you've already learned there that she's faster than you? Exactly. You should come in and use the portage to your advantage. Not try and overtake her again on the same run in where she's just beaten you. The group split. Massages in the pink boat. Coming to the right. She's chosen right. It's a good decision. There's only one other athlete on the right. If she went left, there were two. And we'll see how they get out their boats now. 
Both Hungarians out. Pick the front of the boat up. There's your mistake from one of the Spanish athletes right there. That's uh, Fernandez and Pretzman. Last out and up the ramp. It will be a long way to close if she gets dropped here. I don't know if she's got the personal speed to catch the group if it's been pressing on at this speed. It's Kisli, it's uh, Shikali and it's Brown. Fernandez is a little bit behind now, six sec seconds. Massage is uh, another two. And then Pretzman. Pretzman had some problems in, into into the porters there. She, we know her as a not so good runner, Pretzman. But uh, there she is once again. Massage, as you see there, schoolgirl error. Yeah. She put her boat inside yeah. the person in front of her. Now yeah. she's stuck. She's stuck at the port. She has to she, wait for the Hungarian. Kisli and Shikali is going now. They are really, really going fast. Watch this. Yeah. We Chick know uh, that uh, Kisli really likes to go go tough, and uh, she can also do it uh, by herself. Shikali knew that too. She exactly. no hesitation closing that gap. Exactly. She wasn't waiting for anyone. Yeah. No, no. There's two girls there who yeah. are prepared. Both of these have set out to win the race. Nobody, yes. Neither of these two have set out to come second or get a medal. These are the no, two they, they are going for the gold, both of them now. Really, really good. Well done of both of these very skillful and experienced marathon paddlers, Vanda Kisli and Susanna Shikali. This will be interesting. Second Hungarian, Braun and Massages. Oh, what a gap. Just well, They both got in together. They both yeah. they held each other up. Mm. They made a 50 meters <coughs> uh, out of the portage. Really, really well done. 50 meters, they gained it or the others lost it. Yeah, they had a good so losses, easy, of course. It's so easy to lose. To catch up that distance costs how much? Yes. A Fortunes. Lot. Yes. Fortunes yes. to catch that up. For one stupid mistake on the portage, that's a high price to pay. It's very easy to lose ground on the portage, but very, very hard to gain any. We'll see that all weekend, I'm yes. sure. This is just yes. the beginning. And for those two girls, Kisley, just taking a look back to see what the damage is. And I'm sure she'll be very reassured by how much damage yeah, yeah, they've Yeah, it's still going there. very fast. Yeah. I think this is decisive. If she really wants to create a good gap now and then relax a bit. And the oh, third group will fall in. There we go. A swimmer coming into the portage. That's uh, 154, is it? No, that's Sakali. <laughs> uh. So I misread that number. We'll see you soon. Looks like Belgium. Belgium, yes. As the others run slightly cleanly through. Not a bad idea to put the boat on your shoulder. Rudder is always safe. Mm. Leaves your legs freer mm. to run. Mm. It um, requires some training though to, to be able to do it quick, down quickly. quick enough. Yeah. yeah. Dragging the boats become the portage of choice with yeah. the, the new portages. They're yes. always clean. They're yes. always tidy. Yeah. Um, in the old days, portage could be anything. Could yes. be rocky. Could yes. be, and, and you just couldn't do that. So... Things move on in sport. You can always argue whether they move on for the better or not. But uh, dragging the boat has become the portage of choice, yes. really. That's 157 there. Ines Matuk from Slovenia. She's waiting, waiting, choosing to wait for someone else to give her a bit of company. And it looks like we've got a view on screen there of the leader of the C1 race. It's Re really unchallenged at this stage. It's Polish all guys still about the same gap that. Yeah, 20 the, seconds, 30 yeah. seconds maybe. He created it, that gap in the first turn here. He's still pressing on at the front there. He hasn't relaxed down. As we saw in the junior women's, where there was a bit more leeway, but uh, no, the race is not over. We have seen th this kind of gaps many times in C1, closing and and uh, increasing again. It, it, it looks at this stage like it might be another gold for Hungary in the C1, yeah. as it was this morning. But interestingly, they haven't won the senior C1. No, for, for a long time. I think 1999. Yeah. We're back with Pal Petivari in 99. It's a long time since they won the senior men's C1. Spain has been Spain, just too good. Portugal. Yeah, Portugal, yes. 
But yeah, you know, we see in the, in the women's juniors as well this morning that the Spanish girls, they're not up the front end always. And that's true of all Spanish juniors. They're not always there, but they've got the system yeah. running. So they learn, they get their education yeah. in the way through, and they come through as seniors, and they come through very well. It's very rare, in fact, for juniors, top-end juniors, to make it through, even to under-23s, let alone it is. the it seniors. Is. I think uh, I've only experienced Wanda Kisley doing it. Uh, she's uh, from heading from the juniors directly into the top of, of seniors and under-23 for on the female side. It's probably slightly easier on the female side, simply because of numbers. Yeah. And the same with C1s. Yeah. It's slightly a numbers game. So there's, there's the graphic on screen, Lexo winning by you know, 30 seconds now from Novaki, from Poland. And that gap looks set to stay, really. But yeah, e even if you look at the men's K1 races, how many junior world championships make it through to be a senior world champion? At this stage, it's only been one. And that, that was Ben Brown, junior, senior. And you know, all these guys who win the junior race, I'm sure in their mind, they think they're gonna go on and be the senior world champion. but. The evidence doesn't support that, and and that evidence comes in the form of education through the races, rather Absolutely, than just being yeah. physically gifted. Yes, and also ambition. When they yeah. are too good, when they are young, they the ambition is slightly lost, maybe when they yeah. get a little bit older. Yeah, you can uh, see that also in national levels. Yeah, you can, and often you're a good junior because you're big. Yes, uh, yes. and sooner or later everyone else gets big yeah. also. It's yeah. not. Being, Absolutely being right. big's a temporary <laughs> gift. <laughs> Absolutely right. So at least uh, I, I was lucky in a way. I was small as a junior, and you learn. Then you learn to do it right. You learn yes. the techniques. Yes. You learn to do the the wash hanging well mm. because that's your only way mm. to a result. Yep. And that sets you in good stead for when yeah. you're a senior. Mm. Also the same for me. First national national team made when I was 24 or something like that. So. Right, okay. <coughs> Shot of the leading two women. Kisley still leading. Sakali happy to sit there for now. Sakali's got some thinking to do. What What do you do with someone like Kisley? Kisley is faster than her. We've seen yeah. it already. Yes. So what do you do? You, At some stage you have to do something definite to, to win the race. I think she will stay on the wash as much as possible, not do any hard work at all, and hope uh, hope to gain something in uh, any of the portages. Hope for a mistake, maybe. Yeah. Hoping for a mistake is maybe slightly negative, yeah. but it is yeah. the highest possibility or yeah. probability of a yeah. result. And watch this, the conditions. Oh, it's look at it. amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. I would rather be there now. This is amazing. Yeah, so it's not it's not considered appropriate to, for <laughs> men to go and race women's races, no, Stefan. That's right. You can't okay, no. you can't do that. No, no not racing. <laughs> just just been out there <laughs> on the lake. Yeah, but look, we got a beautiful view from our yeah, tent here. Absolutely. Not, we're not in the worst place. No. I believe there are people at home actually working today. Yeah. <laughs> Now Kisley is stopping. I think that's the only way for her to get uh, Sikali on top. And she changed sides. She chose yes. to change sides on yes. that. She's obviously the portage. We I think we said earlier this morning. The left side of the portage getting out is the favoured side. The angles are better. You come into it more cleanly. The right side you have to turn into, and it's always harder to do that. So maybe she's chosen it for that reason. And also for the turns, it's easier to be on the outside on on the turns if uh, if the leading guy yeah. choose to pass very to squeeze close. You. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I guess safety on the outside, you're, yeah. you're always safe. But but nothing changes. You see, as she as she dropped back, she fiddles with her drink bottle yeah. as if she's pretending to do something. Yeah. <laughs> how, how who hasn't done that, yeah. Stefan? <laughs> uh, how many times did you ask me to take the lead, and yeah. then suddenly I needed a drink? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's how it works. It's uh, you see the same same patterns repeat and repeat. Yes, yes. I think this this is a a really interesting race. You got two world class athletes yes. at the front of a race, and the, they are really going for it. Yeah. And that, the, the the number of 
thoughts that are going through their head at the moment. They're, they're running through every scenario, every scenario that can pan out, and they're, they're trying to work out what what they're going to do. You'd like to be in Kisley's position at this stage. She knows she's faster. Mm. End of. Mm. But sooner or later, I, I've been there as well. You, two laps in, you know you're the fastest. Mm. Five laps in, and your arms start to feel a bit tired, and and you start to wonder. You think, okay, maybe. Uh, she doesn't look like she's wandering there, does she? She's just gone through to take her lead. But uh, but another risk when you can do as you precisely as you wish during the race is to, to be a little bit over, overconfident. Yeah. And that could be disastrous in the end, far end. They are doing six laps, uh, and. Um, after the last portage, uh, six laps with five portages, and the, after the last portage, they have to do a short in sprint lap of just 500 meters. So the last portage will be quite decisive. For those that are out there watching the live feed today, we've had this morning, early morning, we had a few technical issues it, it would be great if someone could just facebook message me ivan lawler and just say if the volumes are sounding good for this session because earlier in the day apparently they're quite quiet and uh, we are of course uh, very very interested in your comments and opinions and uh, uh, almost anything and uh, we love to discuss it with you on uh, twitter but also uh, direct here in live broadcasting so please um, Send us uh, comments, messages, whatever, and we will bring it up. Hopefully we'll get a uh, graphic on the screen with the information to get hold of us. On Twitter, it's Ivan under at Ivan underscore Lawler. And on Facebook, just Ivan Lawler. And that's the only link you've got to us at the moment. Hopefully we'll get something else up later in the weekend. It's slightly more official than my own personal... Yeah pages see one again in shot untroubled counting down the laps but laps count down remarkably slowly sometimes when you're out on your own Coming across our view in front of the commentary tent now, we've got one of the officials or judges motorboats. It's not a bad life, is it, being out on a motorboat <laughs> on a lake like that? Got their sun hats on, shorts, a bit of sun cream. Just hey. delivering champagne to the uh, guys on the rafts <laughs> operating the timing systems. That's one thing I've noticed since working in the ICF. There's a lot of champagne going around yeah. everywhere. <laughs> Champagne, chocolates on my pillow last night in the hotel. Oh, cigars, it was? yeah. Oh, wow. Cigars, the lot. Strawberries <laughs> as a welcome <laughs> gift when I came in. For all the athletes out there who, who usually just stay in the cheap <laughs> hotels, they have no idea what goes on inside the ICF <laughs> official stuff. I, uh, I wonder what hotel you are in. Quite a big gap now for C1, Lashlu, Lakshu, Daniel Lakshu from Hungary, C1 men junior. We don't really have uh, good records on uh, on the juniors. Um, many of them do, do their first international marathon here, so they have. They are just starting their international careers. These youngsters. Okay, thanks for all the messages coming in, guys, about the volume levels. It seems everything's under control now, and we're sounding okay, apparently. 
that's not okay to the content obviously that's still open to debate but at least the volume's good and that's a start it's one minute now one minute uh, from Lachu to no Novacki uh, Poland that is on the second position in C1 men junior third position is uh, Kumpes uh, from uh, Croatia uh, nice that Croatia has uh, uh, a medal position in reach. Croatia that will also make have some good efforts in uh, C1 paddling ongoing. Here we come. Last turn before the portage, a couple of hundred meters to the portage. Be interesting to see if either of them try to test the other coming in either in or out of this coming in really Kisley is not going to be challenged for speed coming into the portage but if you're if you're Sukali if you if you challenge her coming in the last 30 meters maybe to the portage and start to rush her then that's when mistakes are made if you can yes. pressure her coming in then she might make a mistake getting out of the boat rush to pick the boat up leave the nose in the water so okay. It's a, right what you're saying, There's so much to thinking now. We saw Sikali turn her head and look, watch to how great, how big the gap is. I think that's part of her tactic. But I think uh, she will just, they will just uh, take it slow and easy over this portage. There's many to go. Uh, so it's no, no big idea for them to to do uh, anything here. They have good help from each other, probably, uh, still, and the gap is not that big. Gap looks to be, what, about a minute, maybe? Yeah. And both these girls are prepared to help the other at this stage. Yes. You're not always enemies, are you, when you're racing around? If, if there's two of you and you're both prepared to work, then yeah. most of the time you're friends. Yes, you're, absolutely. You're, you're very aware that the yeah. other person is... Yeah. Oh, the With, most without, without your help, Stefan, I wouldn't have won half the races okay. I won. <laughs> so, so yeah, although you're enemies on paper, yeah. you're friends while you're out Absolutely. there because you can all be useful to each other. And to be two in top is perfect. Uh, you have secured a gold or a silver medal for yourself and you really want to keep that. And then uh, the last kilometers, you can start to compete. Uh, and of course, looking for mistakes. I think probably more interesting now coming in is the second group to the portage we can't see them on screen yet these two look like they're going through cleanly interesting they both chose the same side of yes. the pontoon you know yes. but here comes the second group now on screen and this is you got the two spanish girls pretzman on the left there she's moving out to the left side of the landing stage obviously everyone else looks like they're coming right for this one it, three coming right one going left it just doesn't add up massages again she's ended up she put in on the inside, yeah. going last time. Now she's got she's out on the outside. She's what? losing a lot here now. Massage. The other one, it's, it is. The like, made a very good effort. On the far side. Yeah. She went in yeah. on her own, came out clean. She's not the best runner of the, no. of the four, but she's got out cleanly and she's going to get in cleanly. Yeah. She's on her own. There she is, and she got new drinks there. Yeah, that's a well-organized paddler. Look, the yeah, others very, are all over well. the place. Yes. Yeah, Hungarian there, Braun. She's not she's not a runner, that's for sure. She needs to be clean. She needs yes. to be clean out. She needs to be clean in. But the massage has uh, made Three. a good run, really good run. She was... Uh, Again, she puts her boat inside, yes. the other one, though. It's, yes. not, it's not on a learning curve from the first one. Once again, it's a break, uh, maybe a break here. It's Pretzman. Pretzman that is running for it now, really going tough. And Fernandez, second Spanish paddler. Yeah, that's Pretzman could be could be Thomas Christensen's second medal for the day on yes, his birthday. Yes, absolutely. That's absolutely. those two are, are away. Fifty-three seconds now behind the second gra the first group rather. And massages. She's going to have to close that gap yeah. if she wants to yeah. stay in with any chance of medal. But, but she looks, she does look like she's going to do that, doesn't yes. she? Yes. Yes. Um, she will do that. The, the real loser there was uh, Braun from Hungary. Yes. Just 
just a, a little bit strange. She, she was well into the portals, but she was obviously not a runner. So. Yeah. But you, you know if you're not a runner coming yeah. into the portals, yeah. you need to come in first. Yes. She's yes. the faster of the yes. paddlers. She needs to come in first. She needs to get out of the boat yeah. well. And then you, you've got 10 seconds there that you can lose on the yeah. run. And there is Jenny Illich. Jenny Illich coming and they through. They are not together anymore. Jenny Illich and Maureen Christ. Jenny has, we could see that uh, she had uh, a little bit better speed out there when they were together. And now Jenny uh, is uh, out of the portage when Moa is getting into it. Right to the end of the portage ramp there. It's good, good thinking. Well organized, paddling away. Now it's down to Jenny alone to catch up the stragglers from that front group. So we'll. First one she'll pick up will be the Hungarian Braun. Yeah. And yeah, she's a good what minute and a half behind maybe at the moment, but that gap will close and close. It's tough to be out there on your own, but it suits Jenny Illich's mindset. She likes that, yeah. It it suits her her skill set. Yeah. Yeah. She knows she's comfortable with herself in that mm. position, and she will work through to the end. More tail enders here. Quite hard to see who they are. Brian, can you show uh, the time track uh, results uh, for also for this group coming in? So we got the track record of everyone. Uh, the, the view lap view of all the females uh, when these two have passed. Okay, we're also following the BC1 at the moment, so we'll on file. Top yeah. C1 just come off the last turn before the portage. The gap between him and the second place pole is opening up. That's not going to be closed, it's just a journey round for him at this stage. Which is not uncommon in the Junior C1. We've watched it in the women's this morning and again today, now in the men's Junior C1. But we can uh, always use the view labs when uh, appropriate to show um, all of them for each lap. It would be very nice, I think, people out there uh, just looking for that. Where are my pad paddler? Okay, C1 just coming in, first porch. He's got some entertainment now. He's catching up the tail enders of the women's K1, and he's got targets to go for. He's got, he's got something in his view all the time. He's no longer out there alone. He's won his race, I would think, barring accident. What's becoming more interesting is the battle between second and third in the C1. Third place is gradually whittling away at second place's lead. Coming through the port, he's taking a drink. From a cup. Yeah, from, very different from a cup. system. It's great, yeah. because it's always good, I find, to have half the drink in you and half the drink on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because of the bit that's on you, maybe you could lick off later in the race <laughs> when you're thirsty again. Yeah, the, the sports evolved beyond that, surely. <laughs> surely tipping a drink over your athlete's head to cool him down. I like in running. It's, yeah. <laughs> But to be fair, he's not going to be that stressed over it. Usually C1 paddlers have, have their drinks in, stored in their boats with a tube from the bottom of the boat to uh, to the mouth. Uh, could be uh, uh, bottles or yeah, mostly bo bottles stored there. Okay, so C1's coming in. It's the third C1 there.
That's Poland, second C1 Poland rather, and then the second Hungarian. Lelovic coming in, and, and to me it looks like he might close down that Polish paddler. But there's still a long way to go on that race. So that's the Croatian there, Kumpes, Bruno Kumpes, getting in his boat. So he's third, sorry, so he's the third guy, and it's the Hungarian fourth who's only just behind Kumpes. One minute gap between Lasso and Novaci. And that's only getting bigger. Yeah. It's interesting to watch the different techniques of the C1s. Some some of the paddlers are using their hips and the front legs and some are not more using their backs. The ladies up there at the top turn still working well together. It's even more flat uh, up there than than here. At the yeah, finish. the wind, wind's coming down towards the finish up that top end, perfectly sheltered by the mountains. Absolutely not a ripple on it. Down here, huge ripples, maybe one or two centimeters yeah. high. <laughs> and uh, make yeah. life comfortable yeah. to, for us. It's not too hot. Uh, the wind is uh, taking away a, a bit of the heat when the sun is uh, in its. Uh, midday position. Perfect condition in this beautiful, beautiful valley of Buchin. It's, like, it's somewhere you could quite easily come for a relaxing weekend, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. The air is beautiful up here, it's nice clean air. It's silent up here as well. And, you know, nighttime is, is silent, there's nothing. And it's silent just, uh, and it's dark. Yeah. Yeah, there's no night. there's no ambient light from any big cities around it. It's uh, it's a fantastic place. If you're having a mental breakdown, I think it'd be an ideal place to come, Stefan. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. So any any of you viewers who are as well to avoid one close to the edge, then yeah. maybe Bohin should be top of your yes. list of yes. of places to go. There is uh, many mountain guides here. One of them is organizing this race. Um, Doing mountain guiding here in the in the mountains. On the tail end, C1's coming into the portage as we see the leader on the screen. So we've got a Spanish C1 just coming into the portage now. And it's uh, well, the Da Silva, Fre Freda Da Silva from uh, Spain. And the leader continues to pick off the stragglers in the women's the under 23s women's race. In fact, that's the fourth place Hungarian, not the leading Hungarian, but even he's catching up the tail enders of the women now. It's always rewarding catching someone up, even if they're not in the same race as you. Absolutely. You feel like you're making progress and it just gives you a little mental boost. And they are quite polite to each other, uh, mostly always uh, there at the course. If, if someone is overtaking uh, another paddler, it usually doesn't uh, uh, be any problem. Uh, of course there are rules as to whether sure. one class can wash hang on a on another class. Um, it's quite hard to judge that to be fair. You, the waves exist and... Especially well, in these excellent conditions the waves exist uh, a little bit longer <coughs> than when it's windy. So it's possible to catch, uh, to catch a wash even, uh, even quite far behind. 50 meters behind, yeah. maybe even more. And, you know, if one of these girls is clever enough, she could pick up a few places just by sitting with, with one of the C1s. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's part of the game as well. Yeah, uh, like we said before, it's a, it's a thinking game. You use conditions, you use opponents, you use everything you can yeah. to get you the best result possible. And, and that, in, that's the beauty of it. It is. And in the marathon rules, it says that uh, the conditions should mirror the conditions that is uh, in uh, the countries or at the venues uh, that uh, are used. So we uh, marathon, marathon paddlers are used to almost any conditions, especially in the classic marathon races. 
Yeah, I mean, it's changed slightly with the lap format, yeah. hasn't it? Uh, even a regatta course now is suitable, if yeah. you like, for... Yeah. Suitable doesn't mean it's enjoyable, you understand, <laughs> but it is suitable for, for this sort of marathon racing, uh, as you saw in Oklahoma last year, really. Yes. Uh, but this, the uniqueness of this venue is totally... Yeah, you know, this is Slovenia, isn't it? It's Very much so. It's, Fantastic, fantastic venue. A long shot of the C1 there. Cruising through, we find ourselves with a bit of downtime. This is when we could really use a question that demands a lot of debate coming in from you viewers. Give us something big to go with and we will do our very best to entertain you. So we touched on it, Stefan, that you know the the courses have changed over the years from the from the classics down to the format we have now. It's not the only thing that's changed either. The the distance has come down. It used to be marathon. It used to be 42k. Yes, both now, now it's 30. And women, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, they're, they're, whatever the reasons are for that, the, Reason. that's what's that's what's changed. It. But that's brought in other changes. You see a lot of doubling up now. If you if you look back to 1992, I think in in Brisbane, the race was three and a half hours long. Yeah. Doubling up becomes a much four, bigger four, problem. 48 kilometers. Yeah. Doubling up a three and a half hour race is very different to doubling up on a two hour race. Mm. So you, and also we we have world and European championships every year now rather than every second year. So there's there's more to get the teeth into for the athletes. There's, there's a re reward at the end of every year. Yeah, it is. It was a lot of debate uh, when we changed to uh, a little bit shorter distances, but um, these uh, distances, these new shorter distances provide a little bit better opportunities to cover by television and other media and also get more athletes into it probably. And then we have combined these uh, little bit shorter formal uh, ICF and the European Championships and World Cups uh, that format with the, the classic marathons that could, could be like Tour de France several days or in yeah. bicycling or just a race uh, during uh, endurance race, river race or something during one day uh, at the conditions uh, that is present uh, for the organizers. So we have all range, all range of uh, the full range of combinations here to provide opportunities for mass canoeing as well as um, this format. This is more for for uh, formal championships. Just coming around the turn now into the next portage. The two leading girls, Sakali, Kisley, again coming into that turn. Kisley just overtook Sakali comfortably. I would describe it as. Um, each time she does that, she's laying down the law to Sakali. Every time she does it, it's like a kick down for Sakali. She knows, they both know, that there's nothing Sakali can do in terms of speed at and this stage. She's all, Kisley's obviously decided she wants to come into the portages yeah. first, and she's able to dictate to that extent. And for all youngsters watching, this is how marathon should be, should be paddling how you should paddle marathon you saw she gave enough room for Sikali around the turning boys uh, more than enough actually and that's the way to do it you try to avoid crashes try to help each other because if you go go into uh, close contact the risk seeing for capsizing or or uh, any other accident increases a lot so you have nothing absolutely nothing to gain on that I think the problem you face there, Stefan, is 
is not crashing into someone doesn't make a good story at the pub oh, no. after the race. <laughs> and so when the stories are told, it's always stories of crashing. Yeah. So you've got that to compete against. Um, no one ever told a good story without a crash in it. But uh, the reality is exactly how you describe it. You need to stay out of trouble. You need to stay clean. Let's see if these girls both go to the same side of the portage again this time. They both went left last time. And it looks very much like they're going to do the same this time. It increases your risk being together. Sakali's so probably maybe a little bit quicker out of the boat, but Kisley's not rushed, is she? No. She's, she's not stressed there. No. Nice and easy for both of them over the portage. So Sakali's come down the feeding lane. See if she takes any, take any drinks. She didn't. No, nope, nothing. And both back in behind. Now, if Sakali had got out on the right, she could go right here and maybe just squeeze a little bit, test test Kisley just a little. But maybe they don't want to at the moment. Oh, There's always that. Yeah. Uh, maybe they just want to cover some ground and fight it out Off later. They are again. Uh, while uh, the second group is entering the portage, it's Pretzman. Pretzman in the pole position of that second group. Again, same port as last time. She got out on her own on the left. Two Spanish athletes on the right. See, so Spanish athlete in the yellow boat there. The nose of the boat must come out of the water first. Otherwise, you have to wait for it to tilt back. It's all time wasted. It's only small amounts of time. Yeah. But two seconds there, two seconds to close on the water means climbing over one wave generally. Mm. And that's expensive. It is. So they're running, running comfortably. Pretzman once again holds the initiative both into the porches and out from it. She's going for a bronze medal as, as uh, both the Spanish girls, of course, as well. That's once again, easy. Pretzman uh, pull ahead out from the portage. And and she led into this, yes. the portage as well. So, yeah, maybe she's got the upper hand in that group in terms of speed which would give her a, a bronze medal if it continues in that way. Massage is again third out. Again, you saw her put a boat inside the other athlete on her side of the pontoon. For kids watching, this is just a no-no. If you're putting in your boat and there's someone in front of you, put the nose outside because you don't know that they're going to leave. They might fall in, they might mess with their paddles, anything could happen. You need freedom to leave. But those three are regrouping. They'll go around. They'll be, they'll be together again at the next portage. <clears throat> and that is the battle for bronze. Okay, We've got Jenny Illich just coming to the portage. It looks like she's not going to have the legs to close in on that second group there. There's a Hungarian between her and them. Still a chance of picking her off, but so it's somewhere around fifth, sixth, seventh for Jenny. Just getting rid of a drink bag. Look, she's just throwing a drink bag in the water there. I'm, I'm not sure what people's stance on that sort of thing is. We are at one of the most beautiful lakes in the world in a nature reserve and drinks bags being thrown into the water. To me, that has to be looked at. We've done that traditionally over the years now. The drinks bag over the head gets chucked in the lake. Who cleans this up? I don't know, there, there are other ways of drinking now. You know, drink systems have evolved over the years. Throwing a, ba a plastic bag with a straw, a colostomy bag at that, into a lake as beautiful as this is a crime. And I think that needs to change, just putting it out there. I can put that out there because Stefan's not sat next to me right now. There's no ICF people around me. And I can pretty much say what I like. <laughs> so these things need changing. There's the graphic. Sakali and Kisley well away, a minute ahead of Pretzman, Fernandez and Massages. In that group of three, Pretzman looks the stronger, but there's still distance to go. Then Braun on her own, not enjoying life. And Illich, a good distance behind Braun. I think probably too far to catch up. And as the tail enders come into the portage, 
not in the race anymore. We don't get a lot of camera shots at the tail end, so we apologise to everyone out there who's either offspring or sibling or, or loved one is in the tail end of these races. We just don't get the views that we need to give you updated information on those athletes. We do give it our best shot, I promise. Here we are, a bit more downtime. C1s coming around the top turn. Well away from the second and third place. Second and third battle is still on. There's only about a 20 second gap between second and third, but first place absolutely cemented on. If it was football, they'd be engraving his name on the trophy by now. He's going to catch up. These two that are on screen. There is next target. Coming in, looks like Portugal. If I can get a view of the numbers. One six three and one five seven. So Slovenia, Matuk and Ireland, I think, in uh, 163. Sorry, Ireland, I, I just haven't got a good enough view of the numbers to get a sensible commentary for you on this. But the lead C1's coming in now. No doubt that he is going to take this victory. Nice slow motion run effect there. We hear the on-site commentary getting an awful lot more excited than, than I am. I'm wondering if I'm missing something. Maybe it was just the uh, cow mascot in the crowd there that raised the volume levels. you got to love a mascot. There's no canoe in Federation can hold its head high without a mascot. Fortunately, British Canoeing have joined the ranks of the mascot owners recently, so I'm on safe ground there. McGregor, the mascot, disappointingly not here this weekend. But uh, we've got our stuffed cow, and I think that's what counts. Stefan's just brought in the refreshments. More champagne for us. And life is looking good. And they chill this to just the right temperature. Absolutely. And they are a little bit more than halfway into the race. Um, they are on their fo fourth lap now, having done three portages. Fourth lap out of six and five portages to do. Jessica continues up the front there. Sakali, Kisley. Yeah, time's running out then, half halfway round. Yeah. Sikali can't beat Kisley at this rate, so you have to do something. I think they will stay together to uh, the final portage, actually, if nothing happens. It would be a big ask for Sikali to try and pull away and, and stay yes. ahead with Kisley being that strong. That's probably not a practical solution. But it would be good, I think, on a couple of the previous portages to test her and to see if you can mm. get that gap you need to know, really, before the last portage. There's so many things that could happen. Um, you need to have uh, all the equipment in good order as well. Uh, we saw when... Nice little insert yeah, yeah. on the uh, screen now of the Polish C1, currently lying second. Look at that dual vision. As we just missed Kisley, just dropping around the back, dropping around uh, on Sakali there, taking a drink, letting Sakali do a bit of work, paddles down again. So rearranging your seating position is another good ruse for stopping, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Rearrange your seating, maybe adjust your paddles, maybe your shirt or your number bib, something that's a little bit uncomfortable. Always a good reason to drop back and let someone else take the lead.
or just going too slow when it's your turn. Yep. Nothing winds a grinder yeah. person up more than you le you leading too slow. The frustration yes. surfaces there. But those two girls are so closely matched. Yes. They're, they're equal speed. Yeah, they've been like this many times yeah. before and know each other too well. But it's a lot of uh, uh, things that needs to work in the boat as well. Pumps. Uh, he's, he's learning, the Hungarian now. Yeah. He's, doing, he's being stationary for his drinks to avoid the spillage. So always, always good to be careful with your drinks. You don't want to spill too much. And the, you know, why the hurry? Yeah. yeah, he had time for it. But it's quite an experience. He don't have any drinking bags with him. He, he just stops there to drink <coughs> in the portage. Actually, Stefan, I'll bring you in on a debate I caused while you were away for getting the champagne. <laughs> um, Jenny Illich came to the portage and she threw her drinks bag into the lake. Okay. Okay, we're at the most beautiful lake in the world and you're throwing your drinks bag in. That it's been like that in marathon canoe for some time now. People just throw in their rubbish that, that should, into should, the water. That shouldn't be allowed, actually. Yeah. And we, we gave instructions here uh, from the committee that uh, all drinking bags must be left at, at the portage. Okay. So, so yeah, at least the rules are in place to stop that sort of thing happening. It may be in the heat of the race, somewhat, somebody doesn't obey the rules always, but uh, at least the rules are in place to stop that happening, yes, which is yes. a good positive sign. It's not a formal rule, uh, so f uh, it needs yet, to be. but it, it should be, yes, absolutely. And drinking bags, uh, when we are speaking of drinking bags, it's small, it is small plastic bags uh, that, is, uh, that most paddlers have has around their necks. Uh, with tubes uh, providing uh, liquid water or something else. Not champagne, though. No, I mean, uh, champagne's limited rough. to the staff yeah. only. But it's interesting, over the years, the drinks have changed. I mean, when I first started racing back back in, uh, I won't tell you the exact date, but it was flat Coca-Cola back then was one of the favoured drinks, certainly in our team. Okay. And then it, it moves on to your energy drinks and your... For, for the three and a half hour yeah. races we used to do, we used to have to have carbohydrate drinks. Yes. Now with two hours, maybe you're just looking at hydration rather than feeding. Mm. And in the UK, certainly, fantastic companies emerged within canoeing itself for precision hydration, and they do the H2 Pro tablets where they actually match the drink to your um, to mineral your loss. Yes, exactly. And you know, companies like that evolving in sport, yes. it's great to have them in. They, they actually sponsored the GB team here yeah. and it's things like that that we need in the sport to, to move things on actually we we did a lot of work uh, back in the 90s uh, 90s on that and we had that kind of drink I was never into this coca-cola stuff we use honey and coffee sometimes but uh, never but coca never coca-cola <laughs> but to be fair Sarah, when I when I was racing the Scandinavians especially they seemed so well organized they seemed yes, so well regimented we, we seem like amateurs in so many respects coming into it so that was always quite frightening as a competitor that you guys seem to be so well organized i think we were f uh, for a time <laughs> you say that like you might not be anymore uh, uh, i think uh, the way we organize uh, races also is uh, proof on how good you are because it's a lot of equipment uh, for marathon racing and all athletes in the top uh, are in the top in the real top are really eager that everything is working pumps and drinkings and everything nothing could miss because you're in the top if you are down there at 15th position or 20th or so it's not so important anymore so you don't put put in the same effort and the same goes for for the management of the teams i think uh, that's an experience i've seen uh, over over the 30 years into this so everything goes hand in hand if you have a good good management of the team very very, very well organized the results comes and the, op the opposite is also valid valid and vice versa and you, you know the, the great britain team we had jim rossiter yeah. as our manager for probably three thousand years yeah he was there <laughs> uh, when i first joined the team jim was 80 years old and he's He's like the Benjamin Button of British canoeing. He's younger now than he was when I first joined the team. <laughs> and he, but with that experience, he's seen it all before. You know the rules. We have consistent coaching. The coaches that turn up are often involved with one of the athletes directly. 
and yeah it all makes for a sensible arrangement when you get there hotel accommodation logistics everything comes in and, and he was also counts. a very skillful coach uh, i mean jim rossiter was the one who convinced me first to pedal k1 okay so and he, he said you must go for k1 next race and uh, i said no no i can't i don't have a boat but you can you can have one of ours and i got uh, <laughs> a british boat okay. and uh, had to pedal k1 and after that i never did k2 again so uh, jim will be the proudest man ever to hear that he's a great coach because uh, he <laughs> I don't think he'd see himself like that. He doesn't do a lot of coaching at home. He's very much an organizer, yeah, very much a manager. But he's seen the sport enough that he has an eye for it. Exactly, and uh, he was enthusiastic and uh, gave me self-confidence. And I've thanked him many times for that. And, and he's one of the important persons in sport for me and a legend. And he's here commentating, co still commentating uh, at the venue together with a local, local Bohind uh, commentator. Uh, in this beautiful venue here. And the, the other thing he really offered was Jim loved, he expected us to do well. And his expectation gets transmitted through the team. So he was he was one of those people that if you weren't performing well, you knew that there would be a disappointment and it added in to what you had to do. You, you performed for him, much like a good coach that you have. Yes. It's a team effort. It was natural for him to, to have top results. That's also important. It's not in special. It's just yeah, things that it happens. was expectation. Yes. And, and athletes very often perform to expectation. Yeah. And now the ladies is coming in for their f uh, fourth uh, portage out of five. Uh, so after this portage, they have one one more full lap to go, and then uh, the in sprint of 500 meters after the f final portage. And I don't think uh, we will see any difference uh, at these portage than uh, the previous ones. Uh, they will stay together until the final decisive port is, uh, I think. Okay, just to encourage the people who are out there sending questions in, first questions come in. I'm not sure it's a, a world beating question, but if I don't answer this one, then maybe we won't get any more, Stefan. Sure. So, so coming in is do beards help or hinder male paddlers? Do you know any world champions with a beard? I would, I would put it that way. Hmm. I don't know. Um, I don't think I've, it has um, a big difference. Um, I'm, I'm thinking. No, a beard is a yeah. A beard. Okay. Sorry, that I, I lost something in yeah. translation there. So, sorry. So, <laughs> sorry, a beard. So yeah, I mean, is it, it's not the most enlightening question, to be fair. <laughs> but I've, I don't think I've seen a world champion no, with, a, right. with a beard. Uh, that's right. Yeah. That's so, right. So yeah, I'm going to say not, not a real one, at least. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to say no. Maybe you could get some, uh, one of the current world champions to wear a fake beard, and maybe <laughs> we could see if it affects his performance. But until that experiment's done, sorry, Kevin, I can't really answer your question. But thanks for sending in the question. All questions appreciated. Absolutely. Maybe a slightly more depth in the next question would be good. So in come the girls to the, the next portage. Still Kisley uh, in front and Shikali. We'll see if they choose the same side of this board. It's nice and easy. It won't be any big effort over this. They are just trying to secure them themselves now. No mistakes. Uh, saving strength. And I think uh, I think actually the the second group have gained some ground during this uh, this lap. I would it agree often, with you. It often it often happens happens in the end of the of the races in the last two laps when two paddlers are really saving strength for the in sprint that's exactly it. you what well, it's the motivation of the two groups is very different these, yes. these two are racing to do something these two are racing just to save themselves for the finish it's Vanda Kisli and it's uh, Susanna Shikali Kisli as we are used to see her a little bit ahead of C Shikali same side you can see if, yeah, she put a bow on the inside. Strange. She lost some ground there, but uh, they will be together, well together. They're together, but you have to look at scenarios that could happen. And the uh, sec second group into, into the port, and this time it's Spain. It's Spain in the lead. Fernandez, Spain Fernandez, got out yes. and ran well. Massage is last out again. Pretzman running. Watching those two leave, the first two leave, she puts her bow inside. Now, you have to look at what might happen in those scenarios. If that leader falls out of her boat and you're on the outside, you can go yeah. and you've won the race. If you're on the inside and she falls out, 
you can't go anywhere and so you have to wait so it's just looking at probabilities and possibilities so Fernandez has now uh, t uh, 20 meters gained 20 meters over the portage or so we'll see if she managed to keep on that it's Fer Fernandez and it's um, and massages, massages there. and Pretzman is all also with them now. I think they will be uh, together again. Pretzman not looking quite so dominant on that portage. No. Certainly hasn't come out fast. We got message that the live feed is down. Can you try to fix that? Those three girls in shot there. Clearly no one is prepared to make the running. They're definitely saving themselves for the fight for third. There's no intention of catching up the first two. To be fair, that's catching up the first two is Can out of range. Brian, the live feed anyway, seems to be off. Pretzman glad to get a rest, but, and she's done the right thing, thankfully. At last, she's come around to the side of the Spanish athlete. Now, if the Spanish athletes were working together now, what you need now is Fernandez to take the lead and make Pretzman go around the back again and come up the other side. Spanish girls here can destroy Pretzman. They're two on one. They can always make her have the second wash out. Yeah, that would be a very appropriate tactic. Uh, this is Braun in shot now coming to the portage. Pretty much the fun ended for her after the first lap. She'll be glad to see the end of this. And Jenny Illich is catching on her. She'll catch even more if she stands there for long. Yeah. Just getting running up the ramp now. And that'll give Jenny Illich some hope. You know, you, that's a quite a big boost if you see someone standing there for that long. You know they're tired. You know they're looking for opportunities to rest. She comes through, drink over the head. Always a winner. Can you give us the view laps uh, view? The results, the time gaps for every all the girls now. Stefan, the internet is down. I cannot give you anything at the moment. I'm at a little. Okay. I don't really know if anything is uh, going live on this, but uh, the internet is down here, so uh, we can't really make uh, sure everything works. Hopefully it's all being recorded, Stefan, so our efforts are not wasted. People can watch this. If you are watching it and it wasn't live, this is a uh, recording. And uh what you see in shot there is Brown, Hungary. She's currently in uh, ooh, sixth place and fading. Maybe she will be caught by great British athlete Jenny Illich in the next couple of laps. We're lacking a bit of uh, internet connection here on the live stream. Have you seen this? It's amazing. Whoa. <laughs> on two kilometers it used to be possible to read numbers if uh, the sky is clear it's not too hot not bad uh, 2500 pounds <laughs> no uh, it's a military one it's, yeah. it's a gift you got it when you got an exam Okay, more shots from the portage. Just running through there. 155, Moa Rinquist. 
who for the first couple of laps looked like she and Jenny Illich could do some damage and make some inroads into the leads the faster paddlers had got, but that didn't pan out. She's just getting in her boat. She um, she had some problems with her pump. Um, she had to, she had to stop and empty her boat. Okay. So it's a lot of that uh, going on in marathon as well. You need to have the equipment in the boat uh, working properly, and that takes a lot of uh, not not a lot of effort, but you need to be precise on it and ambitious to really make sure everything works fine. Because if you have such an accident during a race no pump, the, you got in a lot of water and you need to stop to empty it, you're off. Yeah. So it is those little things that make a lot of difference ultimately. Yes. Um, you, there's always accidents, there's always pumps that don't work on the mm. day. Pumps have that mind of their own mm. that they can decide when and when, when they do and when but they don't work. But it's interesting that the top paddlers ne never, have, never the have, have the accidents. You're right. Yeah. You're exactly right. Yeah, your luck. There is a famous quote about it, isn't there? That the, the better, the more I train, the luckier I get. Exactly, and, exactly. And uh, that's very true of everything. And the more you practice, the more time you put into the equipment, the better luck mm. you'll become. You better. Re you become. realize that it's not worth all the train, all the training to, if your pump breaks, <coughs> so you make sure it works. Yeah. So. yeah. So yeah. Running through the portage. The leaders, uh, the leader of the C1. Yeah, he caught these two on the last lap. They're out running him. He's also not built for running, which might be why he did kayaking in the first place, or canoeing rather. Girls around the top turn. Kissley, yeah, another drink stop. <laughs> she's almost doing it just to entertain us now. Yeah, Stefan. I she's think heard, so, she's yeah. heard. <laughs> yeah. I think they are now just trying to save as much yeah, strength they're, they're as possible. They're just waiting now. Just waiting, end. yes. Yeah. Watching behind. Yes. Uh, making sure that no one is coming yeah. close. But the other group stopped after the portage. I don't think you were in looking at, when, at the time, but they stopped. They all stopped. So they've okay. got no intention of catching up. Okay. So the, the race is, first two places are decided, but it's still... And the second group yeah. is uh, re tr trying to save strength for yeah. the in-sprint for the bronze medal yeah. then. In the C1, bit of a change there? Yeah, we have a change. Uh, it's Croatia then. That is uh, on the... Uh, second place now, second position. Uh, we often see this uh, actually in, in C1. He was far off. I think it was one and a half minutes or so after uh, Poland. But now he's up there. To be fair, Poland looks very tired. He's struggling to yeah. keep his boat under yeah. control. He's looking behind rather than in front. He is uh, hes a broken man. So he's... Uh, can the next Hungarian, next Hungarian is roughly, what, a minute and a half behind maybe. Um, it's going to be a long journey home for Poland. And this po Polish guy is using a drinking bag on, her, on his back. Maybe he have had some trouble uh, with that and didn't get uh, as much drink as uh, he needs. When such things happen, uh, it could destroy the day as well. It's for them? It is the finish for them? That's what Jim is saying. Okay, fine.
we may well have been misinforming you on the C1s. They did one lap less than the uh, under 23 women, so this could be their last up round the short turn. Yep, indeed, the leader is round the final turn. He's only got 200 odd meters to go. So that Polish guy is a very grateful man that we're wrong. Um, he's going to crawl through to third place. There's no catching him. So uh, Croatia, um, uh, Bruno Kompes made a decisive effort just uh, before the, his last portage to pass uh, Pol to Poland. Uh, that looked very, very, very tired. Nowacki uh, from Poland was very, very tired and, uh, and they were passed by, by Kompes just before the fi their final portage. With 150 meter more, more to pedal, we have a European champion in C1 men junior. That is uh, Daniel Lacho from Hungary. Okay, you may have been away for a bit. It looks like our live feed had been down for a while, but we seem to be back up and running now. You come in just in time to see the winner of the junior men C1 closing in. Hopefully you didn't miss too much. A very strong race from Hungary here. No mis mistakes and he had time to stop and take some drinks uh, actually in some of the portages. Uh, but now he, here he is uh, as a European champion in 2015 with number 108 on his boat. La Daniel Lacho from uh, Hungary <laughs> securing another gold medal for Hungary today. Dali Lachu, Hungary. He's a happy man. He'll, he'll progress through the sport now with something under his belt. He, you know what, though, Stefan? Even if nothing happens for him in sport from now on, he's always got this. Exactly. He's made a mark. He's, he's got his medal. He will always be this. Yes. Even if tomorrow he gives up the sport, he's got something. Yeah, how many of us meet people who could have done something, would have done something, <laughs> should have done something? And these guys have that opportunity. They've done something now. They've come here, they've made their mark in the sand, and they've done something. And I think that's a great opportunity. Absolutely. Uh, and the ambition for him was to win a, a gold medal. And the, the same is valid for also for participating for some of these athletes. They have been selected to national teams, and they participate. And that is something for them. So it's worth even trying. Yes, so many people go through their sporting career aiming for a bigger goal you know the olympic draw is huge for a lot of people but 99.9 .9 percent of the people who go for an olympic medal don't get one and these people they'll come here they've got something they've got something out of their sporting career that they can look back on and you know for so many athletes that's really important you don't want to be one of those people boring your friends down the pub in 30 years time discussing whether the selectors picked you or or you could have done it if someone else hadn't done something else and all those could have and should have stories that's not sport sport is about dids and didn'ts you either did or you didn't there is no could or should in sport and that's the beauty of the game it is absolutely come in comes croatia at next along to the finish nice shot of him there on screen and timed his race well really I don't think he was would have been in a shout with a win had he been further up so he's, he's bagged his silver medal and hopefully he's going to be happy with that a very tactical race from uh, uh, Kumpas from Croatia saved strength to uh, the last lap the last uh, part of the last big lap actually then started to gain ground and passed uh, Poland and will bring a silver medal to Croatia. Silver medalist in the junior men C1 is Bruno Kompes from Croatia. You've always got to love a lunge for the line, Stefan, especially, <laughs> especially if the next athlete is 30 seconds behind you. And that is one relieved Polish paddler there. 
he wouldn't have done too well on another lap. But he's just coming in for his bronze medal now. And uh, well deserved. Well deserved and the, with a very, very tired body. And the bronze medal to Poland. And uh, Dominik Nowacki. And uh, now coming in for their final portage is the two leaders in the women's race. They're just going around the turn opposite us. Not on screen, but only about a minute and a half from what must be their final portage. Yes, it is their fi final portage. After this portage, just uh, 500 meters more, more to go. And we hope the camera can uh, focus on them uh, a bit now when uh, we will see them uh, uh, make their efforts into this very, very decisive portage. Still, uh, nothing happens there. No change to the format. Kisley is going to come into the portage first. Now, if you're going to come in the same side and you're Sakali, would you push up further than normal? No, uh, but make, making sure I was quick enough up up uh, uh, on the pontoon on the other side of, of uh, uh, the Hungarian. Uh, just to make sure that uh, it is possible for me to do a big, big effort over the portage. And she could trust her ability to run, Sikali. Uh, she has, she's experienced enough uh, for that and uh, also very, very fit, this Italian yeah. paddler. Also able to sustain the heat here. Uh, she's training in, used to train in, in this heat. So this will be a decisive side by side now. None of them uh, doing anything big. I think they are waiting for each other there. There's one slightly drastic option coming in here. If Sakali moves in as they arrive at the portage, she could squeeze yes. Kisley out from the portage itself. Yeah. Maybe Russia panic her enough to gain some ground. No, it, that would be a bit cruel to do that. Maybe not within even the spirit of the rule, but if she pushed up now, no, Very it's all, nice all going to be tame. No, tame. now it's running. So Carl is gone. Yeah. So this is a big now run. Now it's full speed. Now it's full full speed. This is decisive for them. They won't give in now. Watch them. They are running now really, really fast. Yeah, Kisley's not going to be outrun. That's for sure. But who knows the cost in terms of heart rate? Who knows the terms of cost? You, you know how much the blood drains from your arms when you run Oh, like watch that. this. She's, she's, she's switching sides. sides. She that was clever, in cle cleverly done, maybe. Not cleverly enough, though. No. Kisley is leading. And, yeah. and now, uh, now it's full speed by Kisley. Yeah. I think this was her tactics. Uh, she really wanted to, to get in first and then just go for it. She can, uh, sh she can win this race now, Ent entirely now. She's going really, really fast. And I think it's uh, now it's done. It's done. It is done. To be fair, Kisley could have come out of there. She was ahead at any speed. Yes. She could have waited for Sakali. She knows yeah. she can beat her at the end. Yeah. But that's a safety. That's a safety margin she's Ab created right there. Absolutely. And she used uh, used a few seconds it took for Sakali to switch side. It could have been a, a good move for her, but. Um, Maybe she, she should have switched uh, side uh, earlier uh, on yeah. in the portage. But to give her a, a credit, she tried something. Yes, she tried uh, something. Interesting, coming in for the third. It's yes. Fretzman coming in. She's coming in early onto the portage. We know she gets out well. She may not be the fastest runner, but she's clean out and clean in. Bronze medal could be here. Oh, having said Str that, struggling, she's struggling, struggling with her paddle. Bit. Yeah. But she's out. She's up and running. Massages is next. And Fernandez, just too slow there. It'll be good to see them running down the portage. Here we go. There's a head-on shot. So, Massages seems to have the lead from Pretzman. She has. Pretzman is uh, not the top runner of, uh, of this game. And there's finally no one to get in Massages' way when she gets in the water this end. So this is going to be tough. You'd have to fancy massages here for, for the bronze, yeah, absolutely. probably. But Pretzman had paddled away from her before the portage. Yep. So Pretzman on the water, maybe the stronger she's, athlete. Yeah, she I think this could be our first close finish of the day. I think it will be. So massages is away. Pretzman will not give up this. 
Anne-Marie Pretzman, who have been uh, uh, who was uh, fifth at the Europeans last year. She have been into this uh, game for many years now already. Always been up there, but never had a, a, a championships medal. You can tell a lot by the way someone closes a gap. Yes. And Pretzman closed that with no hesitation. They've got a turn to and do quick. at the top and yeah. quickly. So for me, at this stage, you'd fancy Pretzman's chances yes. at the bronze here. Also, uh, she shows to be on the inside. On the inside, yeah. And that um, tells us that she's confident enough to uh, uh, take the initiative around the... Before the turn, even, Before maybe. the turn, yeah. yes, before the turn. Yeah. Otherwise, she would have uh, chosen the outside, not to suffer from the risk to get stuck there. So here comes head-on shot. The winner, there's going to be no doubt about the winner. That gap will just get bigger and bigger. Sikani knows she can't be caught. She also knows she's not in with a chance. So she'll be saving herself now for the senior K2 with her sister later on in the weekend. Kisley comes home for a gold. Very, very impressive uh, last 500 meters from Kisley. She's just going. She, she was waiting and waiting and now she's showing who is the best. Really, really well done. Wanda Kisley, who uh, has already won uh, a lot of games. Uh, she had a gold in under 23 in Oklahoma last year at the World Championships in Oklahoma, USA, Oklahoma City. And she had a gold medal already as a junior back in 2011 in Singapore in K2, together with uh, Vic Shai, actually. So just the senior one to get the full set then, Stefan? Yeah, exactly. So she's going to come in very comfortably, crossing the line. Hard to see what's going on up at the top turn, but it still looks like Massages is leading in the pink boat. And the Vanda Kisli, gold medal to Hungary, European champion uh, under 23, 2015, uh, is uh, Vanda Kisli from uh, Hungary. Looking suitably pleased with herself there. Again, relief. It's not always easy to come into something as a world champion and perform. And Sakali coming over. And now. silver to uh, Susanna Sikali from Italy. That is actually one of uh, her best performances. She had a gold medal 2013 and now a silver. Would be great to get a camera view on the, on the bronze fight for bronze. If we can, here we there go now. Is. So it's Massages in the pink boat. Fernandez yellow and Pretzman on the left from Denmark. This will be Spanish very, very are tough. looking very yeah. strong. Pretzman is dropping over the back now. You don't drop over the back for fun, do you, Stefan? No, we no misjudge absolutely that. not in this position. We misjudged that earlier. She's but I think she's a little bit scared of the shallow water on the inside here. That's a very good point. It's very shallow, uh, 50 meters before the fi finish shows, so she's choosing to go on the outside, but I think she she is a little bit far off, actually. That's just too ambitious. Yes, too yeah. ambitious. She's falling off now. Falling back, and it's going to be Massages, who set out from the start in the in the V-Wash. She had a good for a couple of first laps. It's still going to be tight, though, although it's so hard to catch that last half a length. It looks like a short distance. It's just a few feet, but it's a long way to overtake someone from half a length down. It's Fernandez. It's Fernandez who, who holds the bronze position, position still. It's Stefania Fernandez from Spain. And it will be Fernandez. Fernandez. Stefania Fernandez. Stefania Fernandez. Uh, that has the bronze medal for Spain and also in fourth position is Spain by Carolina Massages and uh, Anna Maria Pretzman has another fifth uh, fifth position uh, in the European Championships. The same position as last year. Okay, a bit of humble pie for me to be eating there, Stefan, because I called uh, the girl in the pink boat massages throughout the entire race <laughs> and it turned out to be Fernandez after all. So. But they well, were close together and made almost the same. And they were in the same vests yeah. and everything. Yeah, it's yeah. an easy mistake to make. Yeah. But uh, apologies to anyone Spanish watching the race, especially if you're related to either of those girls. I properly messed that up. <laughs> and uh, I'll try to do better in future. 
think you do pretty well to be the first time. You always, we always make a lot of mistakes. We don't have all the technical equipment uh, that um, other sports has uh, because we just this sport just can't afford that. But um, so we have uh, almost all information in our heads and using our eyes and binoculars and, and stuff to to create uh, a good view, a good. It's always good to have a wingman who backs you up when you make a hideous error, Stefan. I that's, really appreciate that's, that. That's why we are two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as we talked about earlier, it does look like Jenny Illich has finally gained that ground on Brown from Hungary. Um, in a sprint finish, probably only ever going to be one winner of this, but you just don't know how tired people are at this stage of a race, so anything can happen. But it looks like Brown might get that next position. Sixth. Sixth position for Brown and seventh for Jenny. She's been seventh before, and uh, it looks like she's going to have to settle for seventh again this time. Quite, a, quite a good um, uh, final of this race uh, for Jenny Illich, as expected. She's a very endurant paddler. But Brown, Buruka Brown from Hungary, take the sixth position. And Jenny the seventh. Broca Brown from Hungary and uh, Jenny Illich okay. from Great Britain. That's Jenny Illich's last year as an under 23. Um, our senior team at the moment is very strong. It's going to be a big step up for her. Um, she's got to yeah, step it up really if she's going to move up from under 23. I think that's one of the dangers of the under 23 event is that you can be a big fish in a small pond for a short period of time. You always have to keep your eye on the fact that, you know what, the real race is the senior race. The under 23 is just a stepping stone. And then uh, Poland, uh, I think he's finishing uh, fourth in the, the men C1. Yeah, that so is Lukasz Piotrasz from Poland. So, uh, as the end of our second session approaches, it has been, this, that was a really entertaining passage of racing, especially for the third place, or well, the first two in the women, and then... And here, here we can see the mountains sur surrounding the, the lake. It's really, really amazing here. Those peaks that is shown now in the background is over 2,000 meters, 2,500 up to 2,500. Excellent uh, for climbing and, uh, and hiking. Uh, and this lake is on 500 meters about. So it's really high around here. Sorry, uh, just used this. Yeah, no, you yeah, saw an opportunity there and it's yeah. been, uh, you can't help but comment on the scenery around yeah, it's, here. It's, it's so, so it's fantastic. Uh, no, the sun is uh, heading the camera, so it uh, looks a little bit dark, but it's bright and nice here. And Actually, last year when we were here, it was snow on these uh, peaks. It's not this year, uh, but they said they had a snowstorm up there. I was talking to one of the mountain gu guides yesterday, and he said he was stuck in a snowstorm just last week wow. uh, uh, up the mountains there with the group. Yeah, I think we had our first taste of real good racing this morning. And we'll look forward to some more this afternoon as well. And, and then moving on then to the seniors tomorrow. This afternoon, uh, we start broadcasting 14.45. Uh, and then it's time for K1 men under 23 and C1 men under 23. It will be an interesting race. Uh, many of these guys have quite... Uh, good experiences uh, since uh, some years in the as juniors and also as under 23 the under 23 categories uh, stretches from uh, the age of 19 to uh, the age of 23 
And uh, passing the finish line there is uh, Moarin Quist from Sweden, who is the first year, she was a junior last year, and did uh, the European Championships in Piestani uh, last year as her first international marathon. And is now, uh, she also did the World Championships as a junior in Oklahoma, and now as a first year senior, finishing this race uh, on the eighth uh, position. Moa, that is one of the athletes that is focusing marathon as her main discipline. She had a tough race today. I mean, she, it would have been ideal for her if she could have stayed with Jenny Illich after those first couple of laps. Yes. She found yeah. herself on her own after, you say, the incident with her pump and yes. emptying out. And uh, then it's just hard work from then on. And yes. you have to hold your head together so much for a race like that. Exactly. And it's a learning curve. I don't think she will ever suffer from a broken pump again. <laughs> See, it's a tough place to learn, you know, but, but you, those That's lessons have to, to be it. learned. Yes, and yes. A few tail enders still coming in. In the under 23 women. But they're still fairly well spread out. So I guess uh, we start looking forward to lunch now, do we, Stefan? Prize, as prize giving ceremony? Prize giving. I, I'm more looking forward to lunch because canapes, caviar, that sort of <laughs> stuff. Ninth uh, position now is um, uh, Ines Matuch from Slovenia. Slovenia. Ines Matuch, uh, Slovenia. Ninth position. Well done there from uh, the local heroes of Slovenia. Also, over the finish line is uh, Aisling Smith from Ireland in her uh, red, orange, yellow, and pink bout. She's actually now, having been out there in the sun, being a true Irish person, matched her arms to the pink ends of her boat. <laughs> and that's always a good look she might at the end of a race. That, yeah. <laughs> tonight. The I Irish and Sun don't mix generally very well. <laughs> but uh, she'll be experienced in sunburn, I'm sure, and she'll deal with it. <laughs> 